series that was here last year and for Cole Calhoun a guy that we've already talked about a lot he was a guy that really last year came in and nobody had heard a lot of you hit over 500 in the College World Series people start hearing about you a little bit more this year though comes in a little bit different this year he's got a C on his chest Calhoun one of the captains of this team and I talked to him before the game but as laid back as you could possibly see he said you know what I talked to our guys and said there's a reason we haven't lost back-to-back -back games all year there's a reason why we went through the season we just got to get back to playing the style of baseball that we have it starts with getting those first two guys on base. Obviously, it didn't happen the first, but they need them on base to create some havoc. Guys? They sure do, Kyle. Thank you very much. And now with that, we'll take a look at the starting lineup brought to you by Capital One for the Gamecocks of South Carolina. 48 and 16 on the season. They were the SEC regular season champions at 21 and 9. And you take a look at Christian Walker. We've talked a little bit about him. NCAA tournament, 393 and two home runs. Probably won't get a lot of productivity from the bottom of that order and Haney and Wingo, but they're in there for their defense. Good glove man at the bottom of the lineup, but I was looking at Christian Walker. I think what's making him effective is the three guys in front of him. First oh. pitch from Merrill Kelly. Kind of a herky-jerky delivery, but a very successful season. A junior out of Scottsdale, Arizona at 6'2", 190, 10 and 2. 37 walks, 75 strikeouts. Oh, he misses away outside as you hear the umpire, David Savage, let in and everyone else know. You can really see just right now he really has a lot of sink on his fastball. Marzilli just uh, underneath that. You saw he's from Cranston, Rhode Island, and you say, wow, how does a Rhode Islander get down to South Carolina? And uh, while he was growing up, his uh, family had a house down on the shores in South Carolina. He used to go to summer camp with uh, the Gamecocks, and uh, that's how he got indoctrinated into the program. Which begs the question, being a Northeasterner, Rhode Island has beautiful beaches too, but there's something about South Carolina that brought them down there. Nice beaches, but still can get cold. Yeah. And <laughs> in Rhode Island, absolutely. 2-2, two -two, foul back. I think he said, you know what, I, I like the beach. In <laughs> South Carolina, I can probably spend a little bit more time at the beach. College student, let's see. Rhode Island, South Carolina. Hmm. Okay, I'll hmm. try out for the Gamecocks, see how that works. 30-9 and nine against right-handed starters. South Carolina this season. Oh, no good catch. pitch there. That Got thing moved catch. all over the place. Evan Barzilli is retired on strikes. This is uh, maybe part of the allure of going to uh, college in South Carolina. Welcome ESPN to the South Carolina Game Cup. <laughs> How about that? Into the ocean they go. That was after they won the Super Regionals, and the guy that we talked about, Christian Walker, had the big hit in that game. So Marzilli strikes out. Whit Merrifield now comes to the plate. Merrifield, the number two hitter, has put up good numbers this season, struggling a little bit in the NCAA tournament. He squares ball. to bunt, lets it go. It's a ball. Hitting 326 coming into the game. Well, Whit Merrifield, he really is a great bunter. They talk about that, and he, he, he leads the SEC in runs scored and 13 sack bunts. But they tell he he's a high energy guy. On one pitch, there is a square to bunt, and a good bunt it is, and that's going to be a hit. What a job by Whit Merrifield! Boy, you know he sold it, and the third baseman over there didn't really do anything about it. Raul Torres never really crept in. Not that he was going to stop that from being a hit. You see their fielding percentage leading the back 10, 9, 76. Rudiger, Applin, and Cole Calhoun around the outfield. Average to above average arms. Magley at shortstop. Torres will throw across the diamond to his brother, Riccio Torres. And Austin Barnes is uh, behind the plate. Barnes has been very effective at ball, keeping would-be base dealers in check. Jackie Bradley Jr. Got a chance to watch him a few times, and uh, certain players look like like they're ready for the next level or will get there. He certainly appears to be one of them. Foul. Wow. Great swing. He comes in no more with a 17-game hitting streak. Yeah, would have just said, look at the average right there. 441, 12 extra base hits, five home runs, 22 RBIs, and 10 multi-hit games. And we saw him the other day, and we said the same thing. He just has a calmness at the plate of true professionalism when he's at the plate. This one is ripped up the middle, and it's going to be a hit. An 18-game hitting streak in South Carolina. Back-to-back -back singles in business. 
Just a great approach up the middle with everything, and two men are on for Christian Walker. He's really quiet. He takes, he gets his foot down early, and he just puts that bat right through the zone right here. You see his hand out oh, right there. He is just in a power position when he makes contact. His head is down. He's looking at the ball, and he dry, He doesn't try to do too much. He just took that ball right up the middle. And even when he when he gets that power swing, we've seen him last game. He has some power. South Carolina 0 for 9 with men in scoring position against Oklahoma and we'll all remember the 7th and 8th and ninth innings in which they had five men in scoring position and couldn't get any of them in bases loaded in the 8th and the ninth. So a big spot early in this game for Christian Walker. First pitch is a strike. Walker for the second consecutive game after hitting that home run in the Super Regional came here and hit a solo homer so he's hit a home run in two straight. Checks on it. It's in there for a called strike. He's behind 0-2. Yeah, coaches really like, like Christian Walker. They just say he's just one of the better hitters he's had. I mean, he's a freshman, all a SEC, and he really just has an idea when he's at the plate. Well, his idea now, choke up and put the ball in play. Ball. Good job there by Austin Barnes. Mentioned his effectiveness when it comes to making sure the running game doesn't get going. 41 attempted steals against him, and he has caught 33 runners. Probably has a lot of practice in practice, considering uh, uh, how often his own team likes to run. Right, on the inner squads, are like, oh, there they go again. <laughs> there they go again. I mean, if you can throw them out, you got to be confident going into the season. 1-2 fouled off. Did he hold on to it? Yes, he did. Nice job by Barnes for the strikeout. So Walker unable to get it done. Two strikeouts. Let's go down to Kyle. And guys, one of the things we want to watch all day is how they go after Walker because he's probably the most consistent of these Carolina hitters. They surprised him with some fastballs on this one. Fastball to start and fastball to go 2 right here. Now the break of all they're going to show. But watch the one two pitch. Walker doesn't see a lot of fastballs in on his hands. I think that's one thing to watch the rest of the day. Kelly has really good run on that two seamer when he gets it in there. That time threw it right under his hands. Brady Thomas is the designated hitter hitting 328. Pulls it. It's a fair ball. First base. Torres has it, and they're out of the inning. So once again, the struggle for South Carolina. Hoping it's not a here we go again, but now 0 for 10 with men in scoring position. Wonderful day. Wonderful city. Interesting hat being worn by a fan. The Gamecock proudly displayed. Fans of all eight teams and many other fans of college baseball, Rosenblatt Stadium. Look at the total attendance in 60 years, over 7 million. The average per year, 120. And that doesn't do justice to what we've seen the last couple of years when the attendance for the sessions has gone up over 300,000. And they're expecting to break records this year as well, being the final season here at Rosenblatt Stadium. A brand new TD Ameritrade ballpark being built downtown Omaha. To Price tag of over 150 million. And all the memories that you will take with you, and some will float down uh, a couple miles to that city, and they'll start creating new ones for those that get a chance to come to Omaha in the College World Series. Time! Our face! Point. Rule and you don't have to try to get out of the way by rule in the NCAA, and he didn't. Just kind of just took there, just saw it coming, says, I'll take it, I'll get on. Didn't even move, almost leaned into it a little bit. Noble going over there. Maybe he's going to. Mm hmm. Well, he's not wearing any elbow pads, so hey, he's going to take it. 16, now 17 hit by pitches. Merrill Kelly actually has 18, so uh, got to be on your toes. Ball's going to come in on you. Torres can steal a base, although not going now. Hunt! Second on the team with 20 steals. I love that smirk. <laughs> Sam Dyson, when he saw him get hit, he just kind of goes, uh, Come on. Go ahead. <laughs> Johnny Rudiger. A 349 average. Batch in the left side. Torres not going. That pitch is in what? for a strike. Looks like a slider from Dyson. Uh, I'm smiling up here. I'm just thinking of a, a teammate of mine that I played with that had the same smirk as Sam, Sam Dyson. If he, he if he hit somebody and he thought he didn't move, he made sure the next guy wouldn't move and got one right in the back to say, okay, you want to get hit? Here you go. How's that one? <laughs> 
Mauricio Torres at first not going wow good pitch in on the fists of Johnny Rudiger that was impressive as Dyson uh, that that's another way to kind of contend somebody not getting out of the way strike the next guy out and he does the World Series college continues tonight TCU and Florida State is presented by Capital One there you see the TCU Horn Frogs so that's an elimination game as well that was impressive that uh, pitch sequence there to Rudiger and now Devin Marrero steps in. When are we going to start seeing some movement on the base pass, Nomar? I was thinking the exact same thing. Hi. And uh, Arizona State kept talking like, oh, we got away from our game. That wasn't our game the last time. And when they lost, they said, we got to get back to putting pressure on the defense and, and run. And well, here's an opportunity, perfect opportunity to go. Um, last batter. And not a bad time to go now. Herrera 388 average. Riccio Torres on first. 20 steals this season. Not going. This one is flared over the head of the second baseman. It's going to drop. Torres is going to stop at second base. Lingo got out there in a hurry because he knew Torres with all that speed and might try to go to third base. First hit of the game for Arizona State. Kind of got the get, hit that ball off the end of his bat and just kind of flared it right over the second baseman's head. The second baseman did a great job there getting that back in as soon as they can because not only does Arizona State steal a lot of bases, but they do an excellent job going first to third on balls hitting to the outfield. And now Andrew Applin will step in, the number seven hitter. And uh, when you have a team batting average of 337, you understand most guys are over 300. He's another one at 345. Only 87 at bats, though, used sparingly, but gets the start today. Ball outside. So Torres is off second base. Devin Marrero, the first hit of the game for ASU, is on first. Not a lot of home run power, but he will put the ball in play. A high on base percentage there at 472. And another guy with speed, this time to second base. Double play, possibility. Wing to Haney to first, double play. 4 6 3 variety. So Dyson works out of a hit by pitch leadoff man, gets a double play to end it. Once again, Arizona State can't score. Day one storm. And it was beautiful. Look, see the sights that you AT&T covers 97% of all Americans. This summer, get the exclusive Samsung Stride for just $19.99, only from AT&T. It has a perpetual calendar with Leap Year. Well, there are over 680 moving parts, all handmade. Mm -hmm. It's damage steel, the same kind they use in sword making. There are excuses for spending money on luxury. And then there are reasons. Test drive any five-star crash safety rated Acura at the Driven by Reason sales event. Take advantage of attractive offers on the 2010 Acura TL for well-qualified customers. It's the Fusion Pro Glide Challenge. Woo! What's up? Not too much. How's your shave? You can feel it pulling the, the stubble. See how shaving can cause irritating tug and pull? That's why Gillette's introducing the revolutionary new Fusion Pro Glide. Wow. It's like it's uh, gliding down, you know? Now Fusion Pro Glide has been engineered with Gillette's thinnest blades ever, so it glides for less tug and pull. Taking a glide back? Nah, man. This is Brian. You got to get your own. Turn shaving into gliding and skeptics into believers. New Fusion Pro Glide. We're back. We'll be back to Sunday when Oklahoma and South Carolina played a game. Oklahoma won at 4-3. to three. Caleb Bushy had home in the second inning. The break a 1-1 time. Then in the eighth inning, after a couple of rain delays, Garrett Bouchelle belted one deep to left. It gave Oklahoma a two-run cushion. South Carolina pulled within a run in the ninth, but then Ryan Duke got Adrian Morales, who swung at the first pitch, fly out to end the game after a four-pitch walk was issued. But no problem from... Ray Tanner on that. He said Adrian Morales and everyone else, when they see a good pitch, they should swing at it. And Morales thought that that was a good pitch. This is what we all dealt with on Sunday. 1-10 was the scheduled first pitch local time. Four hours and 15 minutes later, the actual first pitch was thrown. Then there was another rain delay that lasted two hours and one minute. Game restarted, and for another hour and 19, we played 
So given the entire length of stay, it was over nine hours. And now it's South Carolina for the second consecutive inning, getting a base hit. That's the guy that couldn't deliver the other night, well, Adrian You Morales. know what? He, right there, he saw, we talked about swinging at the first pitch the other night, and then today he swings at the first pitch and drives it up. And I, me being an aggressive hitter, I have absolutely no problem swinging at the first pitch. That's good. My only thing was the other day was in that situation, maybe just taking one. Right. Just taking one. Just, just saw to see if you can balls. see. Just saw, saw four balls yep. to walk the bases loaded. And, uh, you know, just see if he can find the strike zone again. But came back, got a nice base hit today. Kyle Enders, he'll oh. swing at the first pitch go. as well. So both Kelly and Dyson have been pounding the strike zone. <laughs> well, Merrill Kelly, what he did, you know, you can see his sinker ball, but he really likes his changeup. And actually his third pitch is his slider. But in order to establish that changeup and slider, he, he has to throw strikes with that sink and fastball with a lot of movement. And he's done a good job today. Morales not going. This one up the middle going to be a tough play. And in fact, it gets through. Morales will hold at second base. But back-to-back -back singles for Morales and Enders. And that'll bring up Bobby Haney. And, and maybe, you know, you keep watching for Arizona State to do something. Maybe with nobody out and guys on first and second, we'll see, we'll see a bunt or some action here. Here comes a, uh, another sinking fastball. The difference with that one, it stayed up in the zone, so he was able to stay inside it and drive it up the middle. That pitch gets a lot more difficult when it's down in the zone. You have a tendency to hit on top of that and get a ground ball. He did an excellent job just keeping his hands inside and driving that back up the middle. So Bobby Haney steps in. He's got three sacrifice hits on the season, and this is an ideal opportunity to get uh, guys in scoring position. I would be doing that, um, squaring around. Even though you look at Scott Wingo, like we talked about them at the bottom of the lineup, that they're more there for their glove than they are their offense. But I'll, I'll, I'll take my chances with anybody with a man on third less than two outs. He does square. There's a pitch. It's in there for a strike. That's the one thing that... Uh, Ray Tanner was upset about it. It wasn't the Morales swing. It was the fact that they had an opportunity to get a bunt down late in the game and couldn't do it. The fundamentals were what irritated him most about that. And now he's, uh, he's going to have a little discussion about what we're looking to do here. Probably telling them, you know, look at the infield, make sure that if we square around, that they, if they do decide to move, if they're going to play the bunt, don't be afraid to bring the bat back and put, it in, and put the ball in play and have a little slash. 0 for 10 I mentioned with runners in scoring position now in two games. So no one count now and again squaring to bunt first base Ball. charges that one is up. Chad Holbrook over at third man who's uh, getting the signals into the batter actually came over from North Carolina and and to all those involved with the program has done an unbelievable job not only in coaching changing the hitting philosophy but recruiting as well he did such a great job when he was at Carolina this time and he does get the bat on the ball but he's unable to get it down no more how hard is it to get a bunt down well I think it's very hard I uh, over later in my career I stopped bunting they were like we want you to swing the bat but a lot of these guys they prep early when I was younger you really got to get that bat out you try not to go down the balls with your hands you usually do it with your legs if it's low and then you get it at the top of the strike zone to get it down and he's out because he attempts to bunt with two strikes and that is frustrating for the Gamecocks of South Carolina. Right here, when he squares around, his angle of his bat is just, he's got two hands on top of it. It just goes down. See how he just kind of reached out for that ball? He's kind of just throwing the barrel at it. Rather than letting, you got to do go movement with your body. If you're having to move that far, it's probably a ball and you might want to take it, although he's doing it with two strikes. But his bat just kind of dropped, which caused it to be a foul ball. Scott Wingo now with one man down. He's going to square to bunt. Nobody's moving around the bases. They're trying to get somebody to third base. But they continue to struggle with men in scoring position. I also found it easier at times to, when I was going to bunt, bunt for sacrifice, to do it later rather than sit there and early. See, everybody yep. always says square early, square early, but you can get stiff. And, and bunting is key as you're, you're trying to deaden the ball and soften the ball. And when you're, you're squaring really early, you're waiting for the pitch, you have a tendency to get stiff. So if you do it late, 
it, it's just kind of an instinctive natural reaction and he's I've never heard a demonstration more than I'm hearing one now. Oh, I've just never heard one more than now. Do you know how many sack bunts you had in your career? Two and out. <laughs> very, very few. Do you think you can count them on one hand? I'm sure. I'm you sure. sure you I, I bet you it's about five. <laughs> He's right on it. <laughs> no more in his career. Five sacrifice bunts. You're absolutely right. So I'm an expert. <laughs> <laughs> Kyle actually had more and another failed bunt attempt. This is fascinating. You're at the College World Series. The teams have been so successful all season long. And uh, when it comes to getting a bunt down for the last two games now, South Carolina and the guys you'd assume could do it. The bottom of the order are having a hard time getting it done. I mean, South Carolina has what, around 53 sack bunts on the season. So it's, this is odd that they're not able to get these bunts down right now. 2-1 to Wingo. Morales off second, not going anywhere. This one is going to stay in and be fed down the line and left. Adrian Morales comes around to score. The ball's kicked around and left, and that's going to bring Enders in to score. And the Gamecocks have broken through. They're up 2 to nothing. Can't get a bump down because he wants to swing, and he delivers a 2-RBI double to the left. There's a hit with men in scoring position. Yeah, they needed that. And what Scott Wingo does great right here is that here's a sinking fastball going away from him. And instead of trying to pull that ball, he just goes and takes it down the left field line and is able to get a double and drive in both runs. Scored a guy all the way from first base. He said, I don't think I need to square around <laughs> and bunt. I'll just hit a double. What do you think, coach? Back to the top now. Evan Marzilli, the leadoff hitter, struck out in his first at bat. Ball. Wingo on second is not a huge threat to steal. He's only got one stolen base this season and two attempts. But boy, the cork on the champagne bottle is off for South Carolina. It's been a while. It's been two games since they've delivered a hit with a man in scoring position. And here was one of them. Here's another one. A line shot in the left by Marzilli. Wingo to third, and he is held there. But a good job of hustling into second base is Evan Marzilli on a throw that came all the way into home. North Carolina brought the bats today. Six hits already in the game, and we are just in the second inning with one man down. Evan Marzilli, once again, another lefty going the other way when the ball is pitched on the outside. But what's really impressive after this is you got the base runner being held up on third, but he goes, he's looking at the throw, realizes it's overthrowing the cutoff, man, and continues going to second base. That's what you have to do when you're on the bases. Even after you get a nice hit, you become a base runner. And it's good heads up base running by Evan Marzilli. Trouble now for Arizona State, who has scored a ton of runs this season, but an early hole, and with men on second and third, could get worse. Arizona State has scored 516 runs on the season. Uh, but obviously, at least so far, having trouble doing it here in Omaha. Whit Merrifield, one of the first guys to get a hit in the game. They had two in the first inning. And this one flared over the head of the first baseman, Riccio Torres. One one's going to come in, and that's all. But Marzilli advances to third. And Wingo would score, and it's now three to nothing. Seeing I singles, everything that wasn't going right for South Carolina in the first game is going right. Now, this is something that you see sometimes when college baseball here because you had those aluminum bats. That's a, actually a great pitch by Merrill Kelly here, especially with a sinking fastball. It kind of came inside, and with Merrifield fights that off and is able to fight it off enough to get it over the first baseman for an RBI single. The key right there, if you're pitching, especially in college baseball, and it's so easy. To do this as a pitcher, when you see that, to get your head down and say, gosh, I'm not making the pitches. They're they're hitting me. They're hitting these flares. But that was a good pitch. you got to mm -hmm. actually take it as a pause. It's okay. I got in there. He was able to fight that off. Let's not lose my game. Continue getting in there because good things will eventually happen for me. So Tim Esme sends out Ken Newton, the uh, pitching coach, to have some conversations with Merrill Kelly. A 3 nothing game and seven hits already for South Carolina's offense. 
And now the dangerous Jackie Bradley Jr. comes up with men on the corners. Whit Merrifield had struggled in the College World Series. There was some thought that perhaps they'd move him down in the order, but he is two for two in the game right now. And now Bradley Jr. trying to add to a 3 nothing lead. First pitch ripped at, and it's foul back. Take a look at the pop and the bat of Jackie Bradley Jr. This was his home run on Sunday. I, I was asked to say, can you compare him to somebody you've seen in the major leagues? Uh -huh. and, and I said he reminded me of Jock Jones. Yeah. I can see that. He's got a very polished swing. Jock Jones is another one who played here at Omaha and Rosenblatt Stadium in the College World Series for USC. University of Southern California. Right. The 0-1 to Bradley. That one is lifted deep to left center field. Back goes Andrew Applin. It's gone. Second home run of the College World Series and a three-run shot for Jackie Bradley Jr. And South Carolina is destroying the number one overall seed in the country. Now this is Jackie Bradley's coming out party. And you could see it every time he gets to the box. I tell you, with that sinking fastball that just goes away to the left-handed hitters and a lot of times left-handed hitters like it down and in to really develop to create that power and these left-handed hitters on South Carolina are not trying to do too much with that ball they are going the other way with it and that's what you have to do Christian Walker now oh. steps in called strike tough day for Merrill Kelly so far and South Carolina has got eight hits and six runs with only one out in the bottom of the second inning. Great opposite field power from Bradley Jr. Ball. One and one to Christian Walker. One ball, one strike. Couldn't have scripted the start any better if you're South Carolina. You talk about their struggles with runners in scoring position, and right now they are trying to turn that average around. Mm. And doing a great job of it. Ball. This one down in the dirt. Nobody is up throwing yet, but a couple of pitchers have made their way to the bullpen for Arizona State. You see the lefty out there, and that's Mitchell Lampson. He's going to start his stretch. They didn't expect this. Just foul. A shot from Walker down the line. And Gus Rodriguez had to be on his toes as the umpire down there. <laughs> And he lets you know, foul. How contagious is hitting? Very. You know, they're all over the it ball is, right now. It is very contagious. Sometimes when you're just sitting there and you're not hitting well and you see everybody else, you kind of go, I, I need one too. Well, he hit it hard. Left fielder is positioned perfectly, Johnny Rudiger. But Christian Walker scolded that ball. Well, just to compare things, what we saw on Sunday when they were 0 for 8 with men in scoring position, uh, and today they're 4 for 7, and they had only nine hits for the entire game, and they're one shy of matching that today. And we're, and we're only in the second inning, and even that last line drive by Christian Walker, mm. you take, you, you feel you come in feeling like it was a hit. He's like, I ah. smoked that ball. We're right where we need to be. You talked about it being contagious. That continues right, what you want to do at the home, at home plate. Keep hitting line drives. Ball. Ninth hitter of the inning now, Brady Thomas. He's at the plate. He grounded out unassisted to the first baseman in the first inning. Adrian Morales, who led off this inning, is on deck. Six runs across for South Carolina. This one back up the middle. It's going to be through. And they've matched their total from Sunday. Nine hits. You know, there was some concern about the left-handed hitters in the South Carolina offense, and that's why uh, Mitchell Lampson is down there. It's certainly one way to try to neutralize him with a lefty. But they are all over everything that Merrill Kelly is offering up. Throw over Thomas, four for eight in stolen base. 
attempts this season. Wouldn't be a surprise with two outs to see him try to create something. Why not keep the pressure going? You don't want to let your foot off the gas. Morales with a single in this inning, and he bats for the second time in the second. To third, had some spin on it, and it's fielded foul by Raul Torres. Couple little bloopers and bleeders, but the big blast off the bat of Jackie Bradley Jr. There was a lot of thunder and lightning in their last game. He's creating his own today. Interesting story about Bradley Jr. He really uh, he wasn't heavily recruited. He wasn't drafted out of high school. He was on a very good AAU team and was a leadoff guy. And when Ray Tanner first saw him, he kind of looked and said, wait a second, what's going on here? Why isn't anybody all over this guy? We need him, and, and it's been proven to be a great move. They talked about him just being a five-tool player, and they believe that he has the potential to be a first-rounder next year. Based on what you've seen, and it's only a small sampling, wouldn't you say that? I, I tend to agree with you. And if you want to be a first rounder, you be successful here. Ball. Change up to Morales, misses. Two balls, one strike. During this 18 game hitting streak, he's got six home runs, 25 runs batted in, and he's batting 457. Big stage type guy. Morales swings and misses. And that's just that's just on the offensive side on the defensive side as well. He's just got incredible range out in center field. He gets to a lot of balls in the alleys. He's got a strong throwing arm. And these are the things we talk about that make a five tool player strong throwing arm incredible range hits for average hits for power and good baseball instincts. These are the things they look for 2 2 oh. Morales it'll stay at the plate and go foul. Given the number one overall seed, even given the pitching matchup, just based on how they were pitching coming in, this is a huge surprise. And I'm sure Arizona State fans are wondering what in the world's going on. 52 and 9 into this game. South Carolina 48 and 16. The 2-2 two -two to Morales. Oh, that's side. in, and it's now 3 and 2. South Carolina has been a much better team at night than they have been during the day 24 and 12 during the day 24 and 4 at night but maybe that's why Jackie wears the sunglasses so it makes it feel like it's night another one pulled foul Adrian Morales I remember talking about him last game when we talking about he's just a tough out just a tough kid he's got solid defense he's one of those that they say when you play against them you hate them but if he had to pick a team, you're the, he's the first one I'd pick on my team. <laughs> and he's the one who got this whole inning started with a single up the middle on the first pitch. He didn't start at third base when the season began. Uh, Christian Walker was over there. They replaced him oh. to get Morales' glove in there. And obviously Morales has uh, delivered more than just with his glove. You know, a 281 average for a third baseman. And today he's got a hit already. And it allowed Walker to move over to first to keep his bat in the lineup. Improve your defense, and it's worked for Ray Tanner. Their 48 wins. That ball is pulled down the line and left. If it's fair, it's gone, and it hits the foul pole. Adrian Morales, a two-run shot, and Carolina is up eight to nothing. And that ball hit three quarters of the way up on that foul pole. It was crushed. We're going to need a pitching change. Well, once again, here comes that sinking fastball. And it was that we talked about when it's up in the zone, it kind of just flattens out and it goes right into a right handed hitter, right where Adrian's power is. <laughs> and he brings that hands in nice, gets that barrel inside, and drives it off that left, left field fair pole. Let's say <laughs> it's a fair pull because if it hits it, it's fair. Look at the Carolina bench. Mention those 48 wins. Only five teams in school history have won more games. We got ourselves a pitching change. Good luck, Mitchell Lampson, the way Carolina's hitting. We're back. Souvenirs on sale all around Rosenblatt Stadium. And South Carolina's uh, putting up one for the memory books right now. They have got eight runs. We're in the bottom of the second. 
No Arizona State pitcher has given up eight runs in any outing this year until today. And in the second so far for South Carolina, ten batters, eight hits, two homers, and eight earned runs, which means the ball's been turned over to Mitchell Lampson, the left-hander. He pitched two innings in the opener. His first pitch is way outside. And they do not have a lot of lefties on this staff. Kyle Enders singled in this inning. This one is lifted high in the air to center field. Rudiger, the left fielder, is over. So is Alplin. And Andrew Alplin makes the catch. Hello, wake up call. South Carolina, a three run home run off the bat of Jackie Bradley Jr. And then Adrian Morales hits one three quarters of the way up the foul pole. It has been all Gamecocks so far, but there's a lot of college baseball still to be played. We'll come back to Rosenblatt Stadium in a moment. Oh, this Arizona State team is back, but they're back here with a different head coach. Last November, Pat Murphy, who had been at Arizona State for over 15 years, resigns as head coach after investigation into the program. Tim Esme steps in just a few weeks later and gets the job and is hired by the athletic director, Lisa Love. This man's got a long history at Arizona State. Played there in 86 and 87, was an assistant coach. Three different stints, twice for Jim Brock, and mo most recently on last year's team with Pat Murphy. The one difference that the players told me, they said he immediately brought a sense of calm to a situation. Here's the first pitch, Kyle. Back to that story in a second. Morales is right up with it and just trying to get something going. They can't. Back to Kyle. Guys, we're talking about a program, too, that have been one of the most consistent the last five years or so in Omaha. He steps in. This year, they win their first 25 games of the season. Had the longest winning streak in the entire country to start the year. You see the self-imposed sanctions just there on the screen for a second, and we'll get back to that. Uh, they did their own internal investigation. There's still an NCAA hearing. Two scholarship reductions through 2012. Recruiting trips reduced from 25 to 9 for the 10-11 school year. And again, that NCAA committee hearing August 10th. First pitch in there to Austin Barnes is away. Esme, as uh, Kyle talked about, last five seasons, an assistant coach under Murphy. He was actually let go following that 09 season. And for a while, his name really wasn't in the mix. And then once the players realized they had an ASU guy, they were all more comfortable with what was going on. And I think you know Murphy. I mean, he, he, he managed and coached with a, kind of a unique style. And by his own admission, you know, his personality was was kind of fiery and unpredictable at times, but very successful as far as wins and losses. He, he, he really got a lot out of his players. You, you saw that from, from the way he managed. He, you're right, he was very fiery, and he always his teams always used to play the exact same way he was. Austin Barnes, his first at bat, and that one is in there for a strike. Among the infractions and that dreaded institutional control issue the NCAA is looking into, and again, that hearing is upcoming. So for college baseball fans, stay tuned for one of the power programs in the country. This one to second base. It is eaten up over there by Scott Wingo. Two men up, two men down. Sam Dyson is rolling along here. Had a chance to talk with Pat last year when he was here, and you see his uh, history, 15 seasons as a head coach. An incredible record, the four-time Pac-10 Coach of the Year, the 88 National Coach of the Year. Among the guys that have left his program and gone on to play Major League Baseball, uh, Andre Ethier, Dustin Pedroia. And, uh, you know, in the ensuing months after this, uh, many of them have come out in full support, as you would expect, for the guy that they had as their coach. But the end of that story is not yet written. Neither is this one, although the script is beginning to look uh, very one-sided. And now Sam Dyson is going out there and just pitching his game. Ball. That pitch is 3-0. and So, Kyle, you got an 8 nothing lead. You, of course, pitch for Stanford here in the College World Series. What, what's the, now the mindset change to Dyson? The best thing that you try to do is, is do exactly what you did there. He pitched the scoreboard. It's so the one thing you learn the longer you're out there. Guys, it's the scoreboard, get in trouble. For Dyson, it's no different than it was at the beginning. Work the ball down because when he does, the ball sinks. Like most sinker ballers, when the ball is up, the ball's not going to sink, and the ball's flying today. So I think the key is keep working the bottom half of the zone. Uh, good observation. That's right. The ball is flying today. We saw the other night it wasn't, wasn't really getting out at all. Hurt. How about that pitch on the outside corner from Dyson? 
Got started off away. He's got some movement on his fastball and it just kind of came back over and caught the corner. 3-2 to the leadoff hitter, Maggi. Foul, look out. Out of play and into the stands. This is a sunblock type day. It is warm and very, very sunny here in Omaha. I thought that was a good pitch by Sam Dyson right there. He was able to catch the corner on the pitch before. Maggi didn't like it. Let's go back out there, get his, sets, his sights out there. And Either go back out there again or come inside. 3-2 pitch, jam job. Shortstop is Bobby Haney. Fields fires over. And another very impressive inning. Retired four in a row and hasn't given up any runs. South Carolina's offense back at it after this. In charge of whether they continue oh. playing or not. He didn't really take that out of their hands. They win. Uh, they're going on, right? Yeah, and then that's simple as that. We can. We always talk about what if they tie. You look at the goal differential, and you got to pay attention to the other teams. This time, it's a shot into the gap, and the runs and hits continue. Bobby Haney into second base. The number eight hitter who couldn't get the bunt down last inning leads off the third with a double. I'm going to think they're running into a buzzsaw here, but if you want, let's go back to that uh, soccer situation. You, we don't, the whole goal differential, win and you're in, and that's what most people are expecting them to do. Well, that's that's how you want it to be if you're a player. You don't want to have to depend and follow the other game that's going on. That's what we talked about right. yesterday. That that's why they're playing at the exact same time, so that can't determine how you end up finishing the game. It just makes it a fair playing field for everybody. But you really want it in your hands. You just know, we have to go win. That's it. Yep. Win, don't worry about a tie. We don't play for a tie. We play for a win. But it's still unfortunate in the grand scheme of things that the referee made a very bad call and, and didn't fess up to it. No accountability. I mean, that's, I mean that's, there is because he's not refing anymore, but as far as sort of the public, we, you know, in the society right. we live in, everybody's looking for, a, can we have a reason, can we have an explanation, and you got none of that. Scott Wingo steps in and uh, looks oh. at the ball. And, and you're exactly right. I think we, we look at the different cultures across the world and what, you know, there's such diversity in that. In our, in our culture here, we, ex we want people to fess up to it. I mean, you look at Jim Joyce, right. and we all know Empire, that name yeah. now, unfortunately. But what's great about him, and when we talk about what a solid individual is, he fessed up, says, I missed it. I admit it. I'm sorry. Pitch to Wingo. Oh. But the governing bodies of those particular sports, I mean, Major League Baseball, I'm not sure that they, there was an edict for him to explain, but it was understood. You know, we, we'd like to get a, get a response here. And in FIFA, kind of hide behind that. They're, they're very protective of their right. people. Like I said, different cultures at times. Yeah. But at the same time, over here, it would make us lot, lot, feel a lot better if he yeah. just said, yeah, you know what? They, they should have won the game. I'm, I messed up. 2-0 to Wingo. Ball. Misses 3-0. and oh. Scott Wingo, a double, two RBIs in the second inning when South Carolina exploded for eight big runs. And how quietly has Arizona State been offensively? It's really been a surprise. It really has. And I think the biggest surprise right now is even when they have had guys on base, nobody's really moving on those bases. They're almost still kind of station to station waiting for something to happen. The 3-0 in there for a called strike. Got Wingo. He's probably going. I'm not bunning. I've been swinging the bat well. <laughs> Three one. Oh, he's wearing a bunt. <laughs> and he threw the walk. <laughs> Al Metter on first and second. <laughs> well, we got to stay nourished. <laughs> Ball four. Right. You know, peanut, peanut, butter, butter, and peanut jelly. butter and jelly. <laughs> Of the game. Maybe that'll help. Uh, you know what? It is 104 on the field. You got. You want to dehydrate down there, and you don't want to feel hungry either. We're back to the top of the order. We're only in the third inning, and for the third time, Evan Marzilli is up. He gets a called strike as he attempts to square. Well, we all know in this game, in, in college baseball, eight nothing is. It's only the third inning is is not a secure lead. So get as many runs as he can. Marzilli is squaring a bunt. Tough pitch to bunt that lollipop curveball. And it's now 0 2. 
Lampson came on in relief for Merrill Kelly, who gave up eight earned runs. Nine hits. Ball. It's a good job by, by Lampson to go up, up in the zone on that, see if he can get a strikeout. Take a look at Ray Tanner, the SEC Coach of the Year twice. He first came here in 2002. And when the team got to the hotel, foul back, he basically went to the hotel manager and said, I need to go to Rosenblatt Stadium. I'm not, I, I, need, I don't want to sort of experience it for the first time with my team. I need to see it. I need to walk over it. And the manager of the hotel said, so I'm not sure it's open. He said, it'll be open. <laughs> and he was able to come here on his own and get a chance to experience Rosenblatt. He has uh, been a few times now. Good breaking pitch just fouled off by Marzilli. <laughs> and, and he did and he didn't want to do it. He he wasn't a, he didn't say I didn't want to not because he didn't want to share it with his team, but he was embarrassed right. the way he was gonna react when he actually seen it. What is wrong with coach? Right. This, this is That's just another wrong. stadium. But right. Kyle, it's not just another stadium. The stadium, and it's a it's an interesting ride too, as the rate to how rate. Get back to Kyle in a second as Marzilli fouls that one off. Kyle's microphone seems to uh, have a problem right now, so we'll get get his thoughts on that ride. Kyle, a resident of Omaha, and again, I mentioned he played here a couple of times, so he's very familiar with all that goes with it. Double and a walk in this inning. Two men on. Marzilli behind on the count, one and two. Lampson's tried a breaking ball to get him, and instead he hits him. And now the bases are loaded, Kyle. Here we talk about the ride that... Ray Tanner has had to this point started at NC State played at NC State for Sam Esposito who was the head coach at that point 1988 Esposito retires and the head basketball coach and also the athletic director was Jim Valvano mm -hmm. Esposito goes to Valvano and says hey this is a guy you need to hire he's just 28 years old Ray Tanner gets the head job at NC State stays at NC State then comes ah. to South Carolina about 10 years later who does he hire three years ago Sam Esposito's son Sammy Esposito now the first base coach for South Carolina so everything really has gone full circle for the Esposito's and Ray Tanner amazing Jim Valvano I, a lot of people obviously through ESPN know so much about Valvano and his uh, NCAA basketball championship but he was in a hiring position the athletic director at, at NC State there you see Sammy Esposito Hi. Tanner's been at it for a long time uh, and he really loves it and he's certainly loving what's going on right now with the bases loaded Merrifield ball. looks at a fastball up being around these guys uh, for the last few days and you, you can see you know aside from the team but I love the camaraderie the, the way they joke just the, from the coaching staff they really enjoy each other's company and just have a fun time and that and that just goes down to your team as well the one one Driven to third, smothered over there. We're going to force out at home. We'll get one down to first, not in time. Nice play by Raul Torres, and we saw the arm of Austin Barnes, but he's unable to turn the double play. Well, it's 8 0. They're able to prevent the ninth run from coming across. This is just a good play. Good hands right there. Get his feet set to make a good throw to home plate, and the catcher as well doing a good job to try to get the double play. Good hustle by Whit Merrifield as well. Electricity at the plate in the form of Jackie Bradley Jr. Oh, he got hit on the wrist, or did it hit the ball. bat? It's a foul ball. I got off the end of the bat. Ray Tanner's going to come out. You could hear it definitely hit part of the bat. And the explanation given to Tanner, the umpires are going to confer about it. Want to listen to it? I think it almost looked like it hit the knob of the bat. I don't know if it hit the knob. You know what? I know the way it sounded, but he actually might have hit his hand. It's, it didn't. You didn't hear a ping of the aluminum bat. He's saying he hit that pad. That's what I was about to say. I said, yeah. notice he has pads on his hands, on his batting gloves. He has pads. So you see that. It definitely hits the pad. And that's the sound because you didn't hear the ping of an aluminum bat. Now, I, I thought mean, the first time that it actually happened live that I did hear the ping, but certainly on the replay you didn't hear it. Foul ball. It's a foul ball. It's a foul ball. I got off the end of the bat. I, I, whoa. Oh, 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 I'm going hey, to get help me, Jack. I got off the knob of the bat, Ray. David Savage, the home plate umpire, conversing with everybody. 
Bradley Jr. is pointing right to that pad. You see that pad there. That's a, that's a big pad. I mean, it's a big pad, and I'm glad it is. And they're going to give him a hit by pitch, so he is going to go to first. And with that hit by pitch, the ninth run comes across the plate for South Carolina. Another RBI for Jackie Bradley Jr. Boy, it is just all going wrong for Arizona State. And now Tim Esme is out there. He's trying to get an explanation. See Esposito we just talked about. Those are those are big, thick, heavy gloves. We're going to switch those out, put on the running, so we're not weighted down by that, by that big <laughs> <Yeah>. pad. <laughs> I mean, right now, if you're uh, South Carolina, the way Jackie Bradley Jr. has been swinging, and those are such dangerous balls, hitting, hitting the hands. There's so many bones there you can break. Right. And uh, you're glad he had that pad on. And, and Tim Esme has to come out here. That's you when you try to get an explanation when they overturn a call like that and it's costing you Randy, He has to come over here and get an explanation from the umpires. I'm glad the umpires got together and talked about it. It came together and they made the right call because we have the luxury of seeing it in instant replay and slowing it down. They don't, but they got the right call. And hearing it, and you know, given the fact that it's also nine to nothing, he's definitely going to come out and get an explanation. Second hit by pitch of the inning. Esme's argument was to, you know, sort of trust your instincts. Your first call was foul ball, and you didn't stick with it. But that clearly hits the top part of that hand. Well, Christian Walker, who we talked about at the top of the show, as the guy in the middle of this order that they're going to look to to deliver. Would you ever have said in a 9 nothing game he'd be the only guy without a hit? For this Ball. offense. No, but uh, <laughs> I'm sure if you're Coach Tanner going, okay, if he doesn't have a hit and we're up 9 nothing, that is a good thing. Because <laughs> he's probably going, Christian, make the outs and save your hits so we, if we get past this game for later. Ball. Lamson misses away. So the bases are loaded with Gamecocks, and Christian Walker is up with one man down, ahead in the count, now three oh. and oh. It's, some, it's funny about baseball. You, you talked about, is hitting contagious? You asked me that question, and, what's a, it, and it is. But when those days are when you scoring a lot of runs, there's a lot of hits, there's always one guy who just doesn't <laughs> get it. He's the one. We always joke around. Well, at least I'm the guy who helped this game. I, I sped it up. I made all the outs. <laughs> a 3 0 to Walker. All four. Ball four, and another run comes across, and we got ourselves a 10 to nothing game. This reminder to keep up with all of the NCAA College World Series information, log on to NCAA.com, the official online home for all 88 NCAA championships. A base is loaded hit by pitch, a base is loaded walk now, and a 10 to nothing game. Brady Thomas singled in the second. He bats for the third time. There's a curveball that's in there for a strike. They all want an even better curveball. Trying to stay in the loose now, the way that he's gone the last couple of innings is Sam Dyson. The most runs the South Carolina team has scored this yes, season is 20. That was against Alabama. And a strikeout there. It's easy to cheer when you're up by 10 to nothing. So those are the numbers that South Carolina has amassed this season, 20. Is Arizona State in danger of giving up more Five. runs than they had in any game this season? Adrian Morales having a huge day, like a lot of guys. Most runs allowed in the game, 12. It was May 16th against the Wildcats, and they've given up 10 already here today. And Morales, a single and a home run. Did you have one of these games where you're up like three times in the first couple of innings? Yes. You like, a, you like those games just a Yes. Uh, it just means your team's winning, usually. Morales a little off balance on that swing and now is behind 0 and 2. 
it's good if you have hits, but if it's that, like I told you, you're, if you're that one guy who doesn't and win a game like this, uh, not so fun. 25 hits in that game against Alabama as well. And 20 runs and 25 hits on May the 2nd. Lampson on a relief has thrown 32 pitches. Once again, the base is loaded for Adrian Morales. The 0-2 oh. would have been 11-0 if Austin Barnes wasn't quick enough to bring that in. When you talk about being able to score 20 runs on 25 hits, that, that's not the only time that's, that can happen in college baseball, and both these teams know it. And so we still have a lot of baseball left, being only in the bottom of the third inning. This one is lifted high in the air down the line and left. Trouble for everybody. And just drops foul. Johnny Rudiger was giving chase, and you could tell about halfway down, nobody was going to get it. The question was, would it be foul or fair? That's one of those that just, you had the left fielder coming a long way to try to get that ball. And it looked like the wind just kind of slightly oh, no. kept pushing it further and further foul away from him so he couldn't reach it. It's interesting how they have, they're playing him kind of a right center, not really down the line pull. One, two to Morales, swing and a miss, strike three, and he is out. So they add to their lead by two, and they got themselves a perfect 10 after three. A 10 nothing lead in the top of the fourth to Kyle. To do to get today to get ground balls. The biggest thing for him, the hand on top of the baseball. When Dyson's good, you're going to see the hand come over just like this. So it's going to come over, create that sink on the ball. When he's had trouble, is when it flattens out, that hand will come around the side. Today, though, he's been pretty good and consistent with the ground balls. And here's exactly why. Watch him get over the top. That arm action get over the top. That was a slider that got over the top. A ground ball double play to get him out of an inning. But later on, it's fastball. We've just seen fastball on the inside half. That's the ground ball to the third baseman and stays on top of that fastball over and over and over again. Dyson, we talk about the fastball a lot with Dyson now. He can get up to 95. But when he's run into problems this year is when he tries to throw too many four-seamers, that ball comes up in the zone. Velocity not as high today, but the movement's there. That's why you see the ground ball out. Indeed you do. And Dyson has now started the fourth inning. Top of the fourth. See his very impressive numbers, 37 pitches. So. How to stay between 10 and 13 pitches per inning. You'd really be doing well. And he gets that call for a strike. Zach McPhee is up. Drew Maggi, by the way, the leadoff hitter is 0 for 2. McPhee is 0 for 1, obviously. Calhoun, the three hitter, hasn't gotten a hit. They were 1 for 11 in their opener, and they continue to struggle. Oh. The only way they're going to start to build some momentum is to get these guys on base. The 2-1, that ball is ripped to right field and carrying. Back goes Merrifield, makes the catch on the warning track. Zach McPhee hit it hard, but he flies out. And if you're Arizona State, you, they talk about the top of their lineup. But Zach McPhee, Drew Maggi, they, these guys have to get on for us for things to happen. And right now, Sam Dyson is really, you know, putting the brakes on them. You know, I guess the best way to combat a team that steals a lot is just keep them off the keep base. Keep them off the bases. <laughs> but they had an opportunity early on, and they, they didn't do anything. In the second inning, they had uh, hit by pitch in a single, and they weren't moving around at all. This pitch to Calhoun fouled out of play. Kyle is right. You watched Dyson pitch. There was a lot of movement on it, late movement, and that uh, makes it more difficult to square that ball up. That was probably the hardest hit ball of the day for Arizona State. Staying down, no chase. We talk, we, once again, we talk about hitting being contagious. If you're Arizona State, that is the hardest hit ball. You want to just try to go off that and say, okay, we're hitting the ball hard now, fellas. They're going to fall in. Let's keep going. There's a single, and you're right. Keep it going. Cole Calhoun delivers a single. And for the first time, a little sign of life for Arizona State. Let's go back up to Kyle for a second. 
Thanks for having me with Steve Garvey. First of all, welcome back to Omaha. I know it's been a couple years, but good to see you back. Great to be back. Uh, did about five of these for ESPN and enjoyed them thoroughly and uh, passed the uh, torch to Oral and Nomar now. And now, you know, after five daughters, I brought my son Ryan here uh, three years ago. He's going to be a senior in high school. And now I've got my son Sean here with his natural balance pet food, Longhorns from La Quinta. But oh. this is the place to be in the summer for kids because this is where they should aspire to the next level, you know, after high school. So uh, we're having a ball. A little hot out there in the bleachers <laughs> today, but uh, as the bats are for Carolina. So you've seen a few games. I know you've been here plenty of times. What, what do you what do you like? Is there a team that sticks out to you most so far that you've seen this year? Well, I've been fortunate to see UCLA. Uh, a lot of Arizona, more of UCLA, like the scrappiness. Uh, they take the ball the other way. They manufacture runs. Good starting pitching and a heck of a closer. So they seem to be the team that's got the inside track right now. What about the times you've worked here now, the times you've been back here? What sticks out most about the stadium here last year at Rosenblatt? Well, it, two years ago, we were at Yankee Stadium for the All-Star Game there, the last year, and the nostalgia. Uh, the, the cement was chipping off the seats and so forth. <laughs> it's not happening here, but to be here this last year is special because I wanted my sons to see it now, my 11-year-old seeing it for the first time. A lot of nostalgia on the streets, you know, people talking about this is the last year, buying the 50th anniversary book. Um, this has been college World Series baseball for a long time, as it should be and should be in the future. Oh, yeah, and it will be. Good to see you back. Thanks for coming. Thanks. Hi right, guys, thank you. The great Los Angeles Dodger Steve Garvey. Wow, yeah. Dyson just blows Fricio Torres away. That fastball had some movement on it as well. The two seamer. And there are now two men down. As we play the bottom of the fourth, the top of the fourth inning with Arizona State yet to get on the board. As Kyle was talking about, he does have that late life, that late movement on the ball. And Akita is that movement, and especially up in the zone. That's so hard to get to. And, you know, when it's, well, I talked about before, up in the zone, it's right at your eyes. It looks really big coming in as compared to being down and away from your eyes. And it's an unhittable hit pitch. Rudiger now in, but again, and you hate to beat the old dead horse, but uh, 20 stolen bases for Riccio Torres. I should say 10 already this season and not going in you know no indication he's going anywhere just to try to do something different. Rudiger lifts this one foul down the line and left it's going to get into the seats. Now you can you can relate to uh, you can relate to what he was talking about with regards to Rosenblatt Stadium in Omaha Nebraska sort of being the place that you think about as a kid. You do, especially when you're looking at when you're watching college baseball. There's just the the field and nostalgia. Talking to some of the uh, security guards outside of Rosenblatt Stadium, they talk. They say we kind of have to watch it all night because some people are coming and kind of taking bricks out really? from the outside because that's what it means. Yeah. People want a piece of it. The one one to Rudiger with Calhoun on first base and he's not going anywhere. Six o'clock in the east, five o'clock here in Omaha, Nebraska. Number one, Arizona State taking on South Carolina. And you would think with Nomar Garcia Parra and Kyle Peterson uh, that it would be the other way around given the number one overall seating. It hasn't been that way. And there is a very good chance, unless they get something really going here, that they're going home. The overall number one seed hardly means they win the championship. Calhoun fakes to Ball go. That ball is inside. I know right now you're down 10 nothing. You need base runners. It is the fourth inning. My whole thing is if you're a team that's used to running, go ahead and run. Just get back to it because right, you know, I know you don't want to give up outs and that, but you want to. You also don't want to play scared or, or send that message to your team. If we're going to run, just go. Let's try to get back on track. Ball pitch to Rudiger, looking to get that to move back over the inside part of the plate. It doesn't, and now we're gone full 3 2. What, what are you trying to do, too? I, I know you want to run, but how many we want? What? One, two, three runs? Just any type of runs? You're not yeah, going to get 10. Right, right now, yeah, you, you're not looking for big. You just want, especially right now when you don't have any runs, you want to get that first one. Mm -hmm. You think, okay, gosh, let's just get that first one. Like it's almost the toughest one. And then we can go from there. This is a team that's very capable of scoring runs. A 3-2 lifted into left field and a nice running catch out there by Evan Marzilli. So the frustration for Arizona State continues. Two hard hit balls and nothing to show for it. And zip as we go bottom four. Second inning, South Carolina. Everybody came to the plate and some more than once. Three straight singles to start. Marzilli, Merrifield, Jackie Bradley Jr. then blasted a home run. A 
three run shot and the home run barrage continued where Adrian Morales blasted one off of the fair pole at second inning produced eight runs considering that on Sunday through uh, nine hours or really what was six hours of game action which was really a two hour and 53 minute game they scored only three runs 11 batters eight hits eight runs and two long flies swinging right away as we begin the bottom of the fourth inning Kyle Enders it was fascinating as long as that game was it was still under three hours yeah. as far as actual baseball play and it was a great game and there was a lot of pitching matchup move maneuvering by South Carolina. I'm not sure we're going to get into that given the score here. Now you start thinking about maybe conserving, you know. Get back into that winner's bracket, then you got to win a couple of games to win five games. Ball. Go on. And it's true. There's a lot of strategy, a lot of thinking. You can't think ahead because you're in the elimination bracket, right. but you want to think ahead just in case we can get by this. Enders, that's a good pitch. Lampson. Now is even the count at two and two. But Arizona State, uh, as we mentioned, can score runs. They scored 26 in a game against Northern Illinois in February. They have yeah, the ability caught. to score, and if Lampson can keep them off the board, start chipping away. Enders is gone with a strikeout. Last two outs recorded by Lampson. In fact, three have all been courtesy of the strikeout. We take a look at our Coke Zero game track. Jackie Bradley Jr. making quite an impression on people across the country and certainly here in Omaha. Two for two today. Oh, yeah, shin guard will get a good spot. Man, Bobby Haney fouled one right off of his shin guard. You can hear the umpire say it. Shin guard's in a good spot. <laughs> you want to say thank you. <laughs> that kind of evolved over the course of your career as this pitch to Haney is inside. Either the armor and all the pads. I mean, when you when you were here, we saw you running the bases. You you had nothing on. No, I I didn't. No padding at all. Didn't like I didn't like just the way it felt on me. I, uh, I I've taken balls off the shin, and you get home and you have that big goose egg right on the shin, right on the bone. And I remember they would tell me, okay, wear this. You know, you give me a shin guard, and I go hit. I tried it. Next time I get rid of it, I'm like, I'm sorry, I can't wear this. I I was such a feel player. Really? Can Ball. you tell? <laughs> <laughs> everything had to feel just right, nice and tight. Everything tugging on the gloves, tapping the toes. I guess that's why I did it. <laughs> how long did it take you to, as Haney looks at a 2 2 and rips it down the line, but foul? How, how long did it take you to actually think, I know how I'm going to answer this question now. I'm just going to go with, I just want everything to be snug. You didn't go with that right away, did that you? That was the reason why I did but it. Did you, that, when people that, said, what are you doing? Why am I, I doing? I don't know why. Uh, was, was there a period of time where you were a little vague as to why you were doing it? <laughs> no, I knew no? exactly why. It was to get everything nice and tight. <laughs> my toes at the end of my shoes, my fingers at the end of my batting gloves. That's what I was doing it for. The 2-2 to Haney. This one is pulled, and it's fair. And a nice job over there by Riccio Torres. Maybe a little defense will light up the Arizona State team. You must have been a nightmare for your parents when you were shoe shopping at a young age. <laughs> it's a nice play by Riccio down the line, just making a nice stab and getting himself and say, I'll take it myself. Uh, you know, I didn't wear out the shoes quite as much as you would think, even though it was tight. I really didn't wear them out. Scott Wingo. Yeah, but what do you mean it doesn't fit? No more. It fits. <laughs> <laughs> the person selling us the shoe says it fits. What are you telling us? It's, well, there's like an eighth of an inch of wiggle room. I can't have that. You weren't oh. like that? I had a lot of people, you hear a lot of stories why he does that. And one of the stories is like, is it true that you, because your parents couldn't buy you shoes that fit, that's why you were tapping your toes? And I'm like, no, that's not true. Wingo to second base, fielded wow. by McPhee over to Torres. What's wrong? What happened? South Carolina didn't score a run. All right, Arizona State gets some defense. We got some snow cones working, and it's 10 to nothing. Over the number one national seed, Arizona State, joined by their head coach, Ray Tanner. Pretty impressive, so. You know, we've talked a lot about Jackie Bradley Jr. Obviously goes to work again today. What's, what's made Jackie so good? Well, he's just very level. He's got some talent, but he really understands the game, and he respects it. He knows there's good at bats, bad at bats, and he's very level, and he, he's... Uh, He's done it since he's been a freshman, so he did a good job for us today. We don't get too many eight-run innings, that's for sure. Well, Sam Dyson's doing a good job, too. I mean, just two hits allowed through the first four innings. 
how far can you go with him and what's going to be key the rest of the way? Well, he's in great shape. So, I, you know, even though it's hot out here, I think he could get up to maybe 110, 115 if he's still throwing the ball well. But uh, there's a lot of game left, and they had some pretty good at bats. Hit a couple balls right at us. All right. Thanks. Thank you. Okay. Now you take a look at Dyson, who's been mowing him down through four innings, 54 pitches. And we talked at the top, you know, things had to go a particular way for the pitchers, and they certainly have gone that way for Dyson. But we'll see. Last inning, a couple of hard hit balls, and uh, if they can get a few of these to fall, maybe things will turn a little bit. Devin Marrero, who did have a single oh. in the second inning, is the first guy to face Dyson. Foul back almost up here. You know, right now when you look we talk about the speed of this Arizona State team. Even though you're down 10 nothing we, we need base runners we need guys on obviously. Maybe sometimes just get Dyson out of his arm, maybe square around a bunt maybe mm -hmm. lay one down just try to do something else to get him off his rhythm. Murrow a freshman top of the fifth good pitch just fair and this may be extra bases. Marrero's second hit of the game. He's going to go in for second, and he is in with a stand-up double. So Devin Marrero now two for two. And they've had a couple of those uh, that were foul. This one stays fair. That ball falls back in with the sinker was going down, and it was a good job staying on that ball and not swinging over top of that to get your hands in. And this ball is just fair. Going over the bag, and a lot of times we're going to wait. It hit on the other side of the foul line, but it's once it goes over the bag, even in the air, if it goes over it fair, after it's a ground ball, not in flight, it's it's a fair ball. Andrew Applin, 0 for 1 today, hit into a 4-6-3 double play with a man on second. Unlikely, we'll see another one of those. She misses that by a couple of inches. Dyson gets ahead, 0 and 1. No attempt to sacrifice, move the runner to third just to get that first run, even with a sacrifice. At some point, maybe you look at 10 and say, we got we got to do some multiple runs. One's not going to do it for us. There's a square, and it's uh, popped up. Looked like it was almost like a drag trying to get a hit. On that ball down the line, we see this right here, that ball, when it's going down, a lot of times, we, we when it keep, continues on, it goes right over the bag and still fair, and then it ends up on foul territory. But it's not foul. If he hits the ball, and it starts off in the air right off of the bat, and it lands over there in foul territory, it's a foul. But it hit the ground in fair territory first, fair territory first, mm -hmm. and then went over the bag fair. And that's why the umpire made the call. Oh, little pitch out, nothing doing. No attempted bunt there, and Marrero get back to second with the with a double. So he's got two of the three hits for Arizona State today. The other from Cole Calhoun. That's been the offense. The one two to Applin. Ball. Misses two and two. Wind continues to blow out to left field. That's where we've seen the home runs hit even by lefties. But it's hardly a refreshing breeze. It's just blowing out there. It's uh, very, very hot. 2-2 two, two to Applin. Oh. Inside and a little high. Now count full three and two. I mean, we talk about the running game of Arizona State, but these guys can hit. There's a lot of guys in the lineup that are hitting well over 300, and they need to just keep keep battling, keep battling. I told you that one, that first run is so important. If they can get that across, they can get maybe hope get things started. 3-2 comes back over the plate and he fouls it back out of play. Well certainly in Arizona you're used to heat but the heat index in Tempe is 92. Here it's 105 and in Columbia South Carolina 101. So the dry heat is what they're used to and this is a little bit different. That's a smart man right there. Moisten that towel up put it over the head get a hat going. 3-2 to Applin. Ball. Misses. Ball four. So two men on here.
The College World Series is presented by Capital One. It continues on ESPN2 Wednesday at 7 Eastern Time. Another elimination game. It'll be the Horn Frogs of TCU taking on the Seminoles of Florida State. Homer and I have seen uh, both of these teams. Matt Burke was outstanding in the opener for TCU. Florida State, we saw yesterday, and all of a sudden the bats woke up for the Knowles. A couple of home runs. Mike McGee on Monday was two for four with that big three run shot. In the ninth, he came in from left field and he picked up his 13th save of the season. What about you? We've seen Oklahoma. I mean, as far as games we've done, Clemson was a uh, surprise winner, although, given the fact that Arizona State is losing again. I'm not sure how much of a surprise it would be. There's a chance now Arizona State gets beaten twice by teams from the state of South Carolina. Clemson fans all excited about their team. Is, is, is UCLA the most dominant team you've seen? Which which team would you kind of circle right now? Well, right now, yeah, I, I'd have to agree. I mean, Steve Garvey was touching on UCLA does look good. All the balance, everything he was talking about. They've had two great pitching performances. They Offensively, they look balanced. They play great defense behind those pitchers. So just for not the short time looking at them, they look really tough to beat. Raul Torres, jam job right back up here as it goes off of his fists. And a big round of applause for the ball girl who was in perfect position to field that one off the screen. It's one of the traditions here at Rosenblatt. Kudos to them. We got a catch. We got a catch from them, and I love the way they, they turn because they work hard. They really do. They take pride in that. Two more dozen baseballs have been delivered. Bail one to Torres with Marrero on second and Applin on first in a 10 nothing ball game. The best is the quick exit from the cage. That's that's the most critical part of it. You got to go right away. Eye on it. Eye on the ball. There it goes. That was a good. Good hop, so to speak, off the net there and <laughs> come up with the catch. With a 1 1 to Raul Torres. Riding fastball in on his fists, and it's 1 and 2. That's a good pitch. Raul Torres and Aricio Torres, brothers. Recio has been the more effective hitter this season. Oh. Raul not chases, not chasing that. Little brother Recio. I mean, well, already in this World Series, I wonder how many times that's happened where you have a pair of brothers in the starting lineup. We had that yesterday with the Piggott brothers, and then today with the Torres brothers. I mean, that's got to be a, that's just a great feeling to be a play with your brother in a college World Series. And closing down Rosenblatt Stadium. The Torres brothers. 2-2 two -two to Raul. Foul back. That's why you have to bring, you know, two dozen baseballs in all the time. You gotta you're gonna need a lot of baseballs here. It hasn't happened often that the uh, that the brother combination, there have been brothers that have played together, but not often uh, in the same lineup. At Rosenblatt at the College World Series. Let alone two <laughs> a pair of them and two different teams. I mean I think I read that it was five or six times. In the College World Series, brothers on the same field in the lineup together. Torres to right. Will it stay up long enough for Merrifield? It does. And no play at first base. That would have been a risky throw as the first baseman Walker was kind of running back alongside Applin. But an out nonetheless. And the catcher, Austin Barnes, steps in. Barnes a 266 hitter now down to 264 after going 0 for 1. Then it's the top of the order. Again men on no one has been moving around. They haven't really attempted to sacrifice anybody. And that is what they were known for this season. 134 stolen bases. Good pitch there at 94 miles an hour. So he's still loose and that creaky back that he uh, had complained about in his first start. Weather like this will kind of keep it loose. Yes. Yeah. Nice. Yes. But you got to be careful because it doesn't get too hot that you don't get dehydrated. The 0 1 to Barnes. Time, time. time called. No pitch. Late time call. Usually a pitcher already in his delivery is going to be given the benefit of the doubt.
Looks like the batter asked for timeout because he saw a lot of movement behind the pitcher. Wind shifting a little bit now, blowing more out towards left center and center field. The O1 is away to Barnes. Keep grinding it out. Come on. Mark Calvi was very busy the other night as the pitching coach. This is a staff that will go 12 deep on you. There's been a lot more dialogue this year than in the year past, he says, because uh, he's running the game, so he's involved with this pitching staff. And we saw so many of them used the other night very effectively and for a very short periods of time. The one and one now to Barnes. Breaking ball. That's a hard hit single in the left. And here comes the first run of the game, Devin Marrero. And Arizona State is on the board. And it's the bottom of the order that's getting the job done. We talk about the sink on Sam Dyson's ball, and they just pound that into the dirt here. Uh, we've heard other coaches talk about how it's kind of hard in front of home plate, and we've had some rain. We've, we knew we had the rain delay would soften it up, and now here it is. It's back. We got 104 index on the field, and I think it hardened that up, and that ball just bounced right over the third baseman. Top of the order, Drew Maggi. They'd love to see him start to get going here. Top of the order so far, the top three. One for 11 in game one, and they are hitless today. 0 for 6, so 1 for 17 for the top of the order. And these are all good hitters, like really good hitters. Hey, come on, come on. Applin off second. Austin Barnes following the single and RBI on first base. Both these teams facing elimination. Then you play knowing you got to keep winning. Can't afford another loss or you go home until you get to the championship series, which is the best two out of three. Maggi on his fingers. Boy, Dyson does move that ball in on right. How, how do you combat that as a hitter when you know the ball is going to be, you know, it's like Rivera almost. You know the ball is going to cut in the major leagues. You, what do you do here as a hitter when it's coming in on you? Well, when it's coming in, first you got to make sure it's a strike, so you got to look for it over the plate. If it's starting off on the inner half of the plate, you have to assume that it's going to keep coming at you and come off the plate for a ball. And if the one that is over the plate, you want to really try to stay inside. You don't want to pull that ball, because if you try to pull it, you top it and ground it up. You do make contact, so you still try to go the other way with that pitch. Ball. Good eye from Maggi, although he checked back, wondering is this, was that high or was it a strike? And it was called a ball high, one and two. Hey, this is the type of pitcher that, you know, in February or given cold weather, not the guy you want to face. It's an excellent point. <laughs> I didn't like these guys when it was cold. And even when, and then when you had a wood bat in your hand and it's coming in and yeah, you, you just said, gosh, I can't wait till it to warm up. It's refreshing to know that even a greatest hitter as you were, like you were bothered by those things. You didn't enjoy it either. Maggi, this one into left field. It's going to get down, but foul. <sighs> foul ball, but didn't look by much. Was... He to take one more look at that. The third base umpire is Gus Rodriguez. That is close. It's still even tough to see from <laughs> up here on that replay. Well, this this one should be definitive. <laughs> what? <laughs> Where'd it go? <laughs> it was foul. Give uh, it was give foul. Rodriguez the benefit of the doubt. He he had the best yes, look at it. He did it. have yeah. the best look. Better than that. I mean that's even tough. I mean it's a tough angle from here. He does have white the best ball, look. White line that gets a little blurry. You need that other angle. Yeah. So, uh, Maggi will try again. <laughs> Way to go. <laughs> <laughs> Barely escaping. And you, it's funny, it's a 10-1 game, and you're just kind of knowing that there's a little monster here in Arizona State. If they can get a couple of runs across, to change everything. Maggi does get a single through the hole. This will allow Applin to come in to score. And all of a sudden, the Arizona State offense is starting to work. Player number one, ASU. Be careful. They're not exactly 
blasts but they're bloops and singles and that's so far been effective for two runs. Arizona State their biggest deficit that they've had to overcome to win is five runs. That was against San Diego in the beginning of April. And right here you Arizona State you have one out man on first and second and you have almost just the next four hitters almost just the heart of your lineup coming up. Zach McPhee this one is out of play. Now, to their credit I mean one thing that South Carolina has done incredibly well this year is pitch last year their ERA was over five almost six and uh, this year they have brought it down almost cut it in half their team ERA is 362 on the season and to help get them 48 wins last season 507 it was the highest since 1987 and this year down to 362. Oh. Oh. Well, Arizona State had their ace on the mound in their opener and uh, he couldn't find the strike zone. They couldn't score any runs. Here you bring out your second guy and he was ineffective. So it really is about pitching when you get to Omaha. You need two really good pitchers, right? You want to go on and win a title? At a minimum of two pitchers. Starters. Um, yes. Yeah. Two solid starters, which we were talking about why we like UCLA so much. Right. And they have three. McPhee oh! lifts this one on the shallow part of left field it's caught out there by Marzilli and with that there are now two men down mention their pitching and how good they have been I mean what a difference a year makes and the job that uh, Ray Tanner and his staff have done first in the SEC in all of those categories and that is not an easy conference. No, it's uh, arguably the best conference when it comes to baseball. You know, the Pac-10 will argue with you. The ACC will give you some arguments, but uh, the SEC is, is nasty. Yeah, I was in the ACC, so I'll give you some arguments. No, I know you were. <laughs> Now Cole Calhoun chance with two men on to cut this lead down to just five. Hurt. And nobody more capable of doing it on this team than this guy. The 17 homers, the 59 runs batted in. This is the position you want Cole in. You want them to pitch to him because oftentimes they pitch around him. There's man on first and second with two outs. So let's see what he can do. McPhee continues to struggle. Calhoun needs a clutch hit here. Zach McPhee 0 for 3. He is the team leader in runs batted in, having just flown out at 64. And the, 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 the crowd cheering for another great catch by the ball girl behind, behind home plate. A couple of runs in as Arizona State finally breaks through here in the top of the fifth inning. South Carolina scored eight in the second, two more in the third to get their 10 runs. This is Cole Calhoun, the three hitter. Behind of the count, 0-2. Oh. High and outside, he won't chase. It's one and two. Calhoun last year in the College World Series was outstanding, went nine for 16, hit 563, had three homers and 11 runs batted in. He's got a single in the fourth of this game. <laughs> That's just a great series. I, mean, I think they were talking about just the people in the crowd out there were just he had his own section cheering section for what he did last year. The one two. Oh. Mm, this is way outside. <laughs> Mentioned the uh, productivity last year here the Grand Slam against Carolina made him only one of four Sun Devils to ever hit a Grand Slam at Rosenblatt. And again. Just an amazing nine for 16, three homer, 11 run batted in College World Series in 2009. He had a, he acknowledged he had a chip on his shoulder. He wasn't drafted, and uh, it's almost like a rite of passage at ASU. You get drafted. But he didn't, and he couldn't understand why. So he came here to prove something, and uh, this year again, uh, draft pick of the Angels. So it worked. And this year he's going with the beard. He saw that he looked he was clean shaven last year and he's like I'm going with the beard and effective all year. 
You see right there, you know, he's with that chip on his shoulder. He comes back and he's eighth round pick for the Angels this year. And you don't often just knock off that chip. He's going to keep that on even in pro ball and keep going and say, you know what? I'm going to prove everyone wrong, especially from last year who didn't pick me that I deserve to be here. Well, time for a big hit. With two outs and the 2-2 count, trailing by eight runs. Austin Barnes on second. Drew Maggi with his first hit of the game is on first. And a jam shot there is pulled foul. He had no choice but to, but to try to get some bat on the ball. And that was a great pitch call, a great pitcher's pitch. And as a hitter, the only thing you can hope for is to foul that off. And those are ones that you, you know you want to foul it off, but they often can go in the play and you just kind of get jammed and they have a little infield ground ball. But now it's still, still alive right here. No yawning in baseball, even though we're uh, two hours into this game and we're in the top of the fifth inning. Eight run innings will do that to you. 2-2 two -two to Calhoun. Coming from Sam Dyson. This one to right field. Fairly well hit, but it's going to end up in the glove of Whit Merrifield. And more runners left on base. Try to get an explanation as to what is going on for Arizona State. And that man, the coach, Tim Esme, will join us from the dugout. Back at Omaha, bottom of the fifth inning. South Carolina leads Arizona State 10 to 2, joined by the head coach, Tim Esme. Obviously, 10-2 deficit, some work to do here, but what do you need to do offensively to get back in this thing? Well, I think we need to do what we did last inning. Just commit to having good A-Bs and not trying to do too much. And, uh, you know, uh, been in this ballpark, uh, stranger things have happened. And I think we just have to continue to just get good A-Bs, stay with the approach. There's a lot of game left. You guys had really pitched all year, and I know Merrill Kelly struggles a little bit today. From your standpoint, what do you have the most problems with? Well, I just think, you know, there's a couple gins here and there, balls down the line, and then uh, the big pitch by uh, Bradley Jr. I mean, that's just, they did a good job of uh, kind of taking advantage of it after uh, the momentum. Hitting is contagious, and when that starts to happen, they uh, they finished off their ABs, is what happened with Merrill today. Okay. Tim, thanks. All right, thanks. Okay. Well, they did have a couple of good at-bats, but I know that uh, up here anyway, no more. It just strikes you as odd, and I'm sure there's a few Arizona State fans out there wondering when we're going to start to see some of that running game. Obviously, you need guys on base, but they've had a couple of chances. A team that uh, attempted 176 steals on the season. That's over 100 more than South Carolina. They were oh. successful 134 times. They got like 90 more steals in South Carolina, and they haven't used it once in two games. Which is very, very odd and very, Haven't succeeded, I should say. Right. Especially, I know you're down by 10 runs. Top of the order, Evan Marzilli. Good start for South Carolina. His second hit of the game, and he was hit by a pitch. So as we play the bottom of the fifth inning, leadoff man is on for the game cost. Well, if you're South Carolina, after you give up two, you have a 10-run lead, then you give up two runs, it's still an eight-run lead, but you want to come back and let, you, so you don't want to get the momentum to change on the ASU's side, and that's how you come back. You start off with a single and try to produce some more runs. Tough part of the order for Lamps in the face. Whit Merrifield squares to bunt. And I think South Carolina's thinking the exact same thing. That's why we're scoring around right now. Mm -hmm. We're going to get those guys in scoring position, keep doing these things that, uh, that have been successful all year for us. Merrifield's dad, Bill, was an All-American at Wake Forest, and he played pro ball for Oklahoma City. Throw over to first. He broke his foot here in Omaha when he was playing, and that was the end of his career. He took six years off and came back when Witt was playing t-ball. Taught him everything, and now Dad is back in Omaha with his son, the same place that he retired, watching his son play in the College World Series. Harry Field flies to center field. It's caught out there by Applin, and there's one man down. Now, Jackie Bradley Jr. steps up. He's been the biggest story of the day, and really for the College World Series, I think, for South Carolina. A single, a three-run home run in the second, Hit by a pitch and an RBI in the third. And here he is in the fifth. In a big swing right there. He saw that breaking ball. And we talked about his swing, how he's so calm at the plate. And he just tried to hit that a mile. And understandably so, because he's capable of hitting it a mile. And you take a lefty, he'll pull him. He'll also hit it the other way. He uses all the fields. 
Here's another one. A good pitch that time from Lampson. So he's behind 0 and 2. Marzulli is back. Watching Jackie Bradley Jr. at the plate, even though he's behind 0-2, it doesn't seem like it phases him by any. No. <laughs> he doesn't change. It's like it's almost like he's still in control, and I think that's what the coaches like about him so much. The 0-2 oh. outside. I guess one of the things that allows these teams to succeed, all of them that count here, is their ability to hit with two outs and two strikes, and they all, they all, eight of them that are here do a very good job of it. What was your approach with two strikes? Did it change? It did. I I thought about obviously making contact and didn't want to strike out. Hated striking out. Um, we call it just shortening up a little bit. Maybe just brought the hands maybe not as far back, but a little bit closer to my body, just so it could be a kind of a shorter swing mm -hmm. to make contact, but not just not where I'm like just play, kind of playing pepper or just want to tap the ball, but just shorten that up a little bit to put it in play. The one two to Jackie Bradley Jr. Ripped. Great play at first base. Quickly to the shortstop. Oh. Maggi and there'll be. No! Oh, he beats the throw. No, nice didn't. play by Lampson to get over there. But what a job by Riccio Torres just to field that ball. Bradley hammered it. Well, we talked about these teams to get here, Arizona State, some of the stuff we talked about stolen bases, but they have some great defense behind their pitching. And Riccio Torres makes another fine play over here at first base. That was a rocket and makes a great throw to the shortstop at second base. And trying to turn a double play, you need the pitcher to get over there. And he just, umpire says he was off the bag, got pulled off a little bit. But that was very, very close for a double play. Christian Walker steps in. What a job by Lampson to get over there. Tussling over there. Here he is. He just trying to get without. Hopefully he didn't twist an ankle right there. And Jackie Bradley Jr. hustling down the line. Bradley Jr. seven for ten this season in steals and attempts. It's a great job too by Drew Maggi. He got it and got rid of it as a shortstop. Oh. Off speed change up in the dirt from Lampson. Drew Maggi had a quick release over yeah. there at shortstop to get that ball over to first. And that's one of the toughest plays for a shortstop because you're throwing it and you, there's no one really at first base at the time because the pitcher's trying to get over there and you're almost like a quarterback trying to throw to a receiver. We may have some breaking news here if they don't score. This will be consecutive innings that the South Carolina offense would not have scored after putting up an eight spot in the second and two more in the third. The 1 0. Walker lifts this one to the third baseman. The pitcher, Lamson, is there. <laughs> now the shortstop ends up with it in his glove. That's Drew Maggi. So Lamson seems to be settling in. Gives up a single, but that's it. Good defensive play at first base. And we're seeing if there's any more in the end of the fifth. The strength of mind in the face of adversity. Our Carl Ravitch, ZSPN's coverage of the NCAA College World Series is presented by Capital One. We are going to the top of the sixth, and South Carolina's worked its way to a 10-2 advantage. The NCAA Elite 88 Award goes to the Arizona State junior outfielder Andrew Workman. This award is presented to the student athlete with the highest cumulative grade point average participating at the final site for each of the NCAA's 88 championships. Andrew is majoring in finance, and he's got a grade point average of 3.903. Congratulations to Andrew Workman as he wins the NCAA Elite 88 Award. I think that's great. We talk about all these athletes, we can see how good they are on the ball field, but doing it in the classroom as well. The Bruins of UCLA are 2-0. and oh. They will face the winner of the TCU Florida State game. That game is Wednesday at 7 o'clock Eastern time. The loser, like Florida, will go home. Mike Martin, of course, the head coach at Florida State. 14th year that he has been here as a head coach and uh, trying to win his first national championship. People have been very, very impressed with UCLA. Well, we're trying everything to stay cool here. The sun actually is kind of hid behind some clouds, which is good news. Got some umpires working on some equipment. And as a result, a little bit of a delay here as we move to the sixth inning. 
Let's take a look at some of the storylines that we have seen at the College World Series so far. UCLA and TCU, Garrett Cole was outstanding, eight innings, 13 Ks. If you didn't have a chance to see him and you were interested in watching a future major leaguer, next time he's on the mound, and, and maybe you could say that about uh, Trevor Bauer and even Rasmussen, their third starter. Florida is eliminated. The Seminoles send the Gators home. The offense for Clemson, that was a team that many looked at and said, well, they don't belong in the same field as Arizona State, and they beat them. And they did it with a lot of singles, by the way. They, in fact, they didn't have an extra base hit in the game against Arizona State. And Rosenblatt Stadium's final season, 60 years. The plan for the uh, stadium here is to turn it into an extended parking lot for the zoo, but they're going to leave a portion, kind of a mini field, and they're going to leave the foul poles so fans can come and visit. Uh, those that have either been here, played here, visited. Oh. And so Rosenblatt Stadium will always will always be a part of Omaha. And I was told uh, earlier today that there was a ballpark a couple of blocks away here that actually had Babe Ruth and Lou Gehrig play on it and Satchel Page as well. And there is nothing in that area that currently uh, recognize that the park once existed. They're going to do that here at Rosenblatt, and I believe there's an effort to kind of get something shown down where that old park used to be. Brown Park was the name of it. And there's another discussion on a hit by pitch. The umpire was kind of looking to see if there was a mark left, and now it's Ray Tanner's chance to come out and talk with the home plate umpire, David Savage. Second time in the game, we've had a little controversy on a hit by pitch. Yeah, we called the foul ball initially, and we see that pitch. We get to see it. We get to slow it down, and there was it did hit off his forearm, and you see the umpire calling foul ball initially, and it's great because <laughs> what he does, what Riccio Torres does right away, he goes over and he shows him his arm and says, "Look, this is where it hits me." Umpire takes a look, says, "Yeah, you're right. Go ahead, take your base." <laughs> and in the background, you can see Ray Tanner, but. <laughs> It's confirmed there's a mark there. There is a mark, and he's like, yep, you're right, go. At least the umpire's not afraid to say, okay, you know, like, turn it over, it's okay, it. let's get it right. <laughs> let's get the call right, and he's kind of, it's right. That, that is his instant replay. <laughs> Here's the evidence of it. Ball. So Johnny Rudiger, once again, Arizona State now getting some base runners on. Rudiger, a 349 average, he's got speed. Racio Torres has some speed as well. We'll see if they get the running game going. Not yet, but a sacrifice and a good one this time. Morales was going to barehand it and nothing doing. And that's a little bit more like it for Arizona State. I'm not sure there was going to be a play at all for Morales on a good bunt. That's a, that's just an excellent bunt. That's a tough play for a third baseman. He lays it per, down perfectly. I don't really know if it was necessarily for a sack or going for a bunt for a base hit. And the only chance Adrian Morales has is to barehand that ball and come up with it. Nice bunt for a base hit by Johnny Rudiger. And now Devin Marrero and the hottest hitter for the uh, Sun Devils today. Marrero in the second, a single to center field, and then in the fifth he had a double to left. Now, South Carolina is not hanging on here, but you do get the impression that uh, that Arizona State is just beginning to start to chip away. See in the bullpen, the side armor, Jose Mata. He gave up that home run to Garrett Bouchelle the other night. Nice change up there from Sam Dyson. You were asking me how important that first run is. You just want to get that first run over. The, and you know, I still like to just see Arizona just kind of get back to their game. Mm -hmm. I know you're still down. You don't want to run yourself out of innings. But then again, when you've been so successful at it, of course, of the year, you might have to get back to it. Torres on second, Rudiger on first, Devin Marrero looking for his third hit of the game. Another good pitch from Dyson, and he's got him fooled a little bit. Let's go back to that base running in the 2010 College World Series, the Arizona State offense two extra base hits three for 11 with men in scoring position and when you steal 134 bags on the year and have yet to steal one in the College World Series you're going to at least open yourself up to questions. Marrero up the middle could be two. 
Wingo to Haney, double play. And small ball will keep you out of that, and uh, that's the second double play that Arizona State has hit into. Well, if you're Sam Dyson, this is just a great pitch. You, you're in trouble right here. You guys man on first and second with nobody out. You get a ground ball. You know the middle of your infield are great glove men up the middle. They make a nice play right there. Gets a nice high hop, kind of a low feed, but it recovers perfectly to make a perfect throw to first base for a double play. So once again, runners in scoring position in the struggles. Now Andrew Applin, the center fielder. This one is hit on the ground, and what a difference a couple of batters can make. Arizona State had two on, nobody out, a double play and a ground out, and it's still 10-2. Thanks to the new... You see the clouds that have kind of moved in here at Rosenblatt Stadium, and that's a, a warm relief for the fans here who have been hot. So now it's just warm. It's 10-2, and it's not for lack of opportunities for Arizona State. Speaking of opportunities, Ghana and Germany will meet at 2 Eastern on Wednesday. Same time, Australia and Serbia will play on ESPN2. The Germans are fighting for survival. They need a win to have a chance to move on. Ghana, with a draw, advances to the knockout phase. And the Serbs, stunned Germany one zip on Friday, will advance with a win. First pinch hitter of the game is going to be Adam Matthews, who will come up for Brady Thomas, who was the designated hitter. There's a lot of stunning things going yep. on in the World Cup. The fact that Germany needs to win. Just like here in the College World Series, stunning that ASU, number one in the country, coming in and facing elimination right now. Fan of Italia, Italy. Yeah, that's you. We're on you. Yeah. Come on, You're be on a TV, TV hero. Go ahead, show there us. you go. There you. Nice. We're all <laughs> over them. <laughs> Adam Matthews, the pinch hitter, tries to bunt for a hit. And denied. Got up against Oklahoma in the first game and is unable to get a hit. He's 0 for 1 with a strikeout. But on the year, he's put up some pretty good numbers. Here's another attempted bunt, this time the third. Torres, nice throw across to his brother, Ricio Torres. And the bunt attempt for a hit would fail. Good read by Raul Torres at third base, who charged hard. That is a great play by Raul Torres right there. He's all, he made another great play earlier here in the in the game before down the line. But here's it's a nice bunt. He gets it down. He gets about. If you're going to go for a bunt for base hit, make sure the third baseman has to field it. And third baseman came in strong and made a good throw to first base. Now Morales, Adrian swings over that. Adrian started the game a house of fire. He had a single in the second, then a home run in the second so he was up twice in that one inning when they scored eight runs and delivered each time struck oh. out in his last at bat well one morales in the nca postseason prior to this was hitting 346 he was nine for 26 coming into omaha that one's going to drift out of play yeah, and Adrian Morales, they talk about him just being that true leader. He's a true leader on the team. He's good. He always questions the coaches, like, why'd you make that decision? Can you tell me? Then it's not really just questioning him. He just really wants to learn and loves the game so much. The one, two. Look out. But he's also one of those guys who, <laughs> who will come to the mound and, and he'll look at his pitching coach and say, why, why are we throwing fastballs? They, they're <laughs> sitting on fastballs or they're sitting on changeups. <laughs> and the coach at one point had to look at him and say, well, we're, we're, we're throwing change-ups because they're killing our fastballs. Have you not noticed? <laughs> okay, good point. Back to second base. Back to third base. <laughs> but they just talk so highly of Adrian Morales. They right. <laughs> you need personalities like that on the team, too. Good job. by. If you're going to swing, make sure you make contact, and he did there. Protecting the plate. Difference between pro ball and college ball right there. You get that ball off the end of your bat and that wood bat, you're getting a new one. It's either broken or the end of it's chipped off. This one is smoked at the third baseman, Raul Torres. Very, very efficient over there at third base. He's retired the first two. Among the uh, different 
sights and sounds from the rain delay on Sunday was this play. This is uh, watched in the background. That's Tim Victoris, who's the trainer and doink. He, he jumped up and hit his head on the top of the dugout. And, and trust us, since that was circled by Nomar and brought up on ESPN's <laughs> television, uh, he's heard about it. He's now <laughs> got a hat <laughs> signed by you. Oh. <laughs> That's the reward. There it is, right here. Let's put it right there. There we go. We, we signed it. You know, I, I made sure too. You know, how was his head? I asked him before the game, are you doing okay? And oh. they were saying that. Uh, after that, after I talked to him, he probably doesn't remember. He's still going through a little bit of amnesia after he's got a picture day. on his phone. Somebody took it right off <laughs> yeah, the television. Just to remind him, do you remember this happened to you? <laughs> Memo yes, to the good did. folks at uh, Sports Center. He actually is begging to be one of the not top five or not top <laughs> ten plays. He wants uh, notoriety and banging his head on the top of a cement dugout is a great way to get it. So as we begin to edit those not top tens, he, Tim would like to be part of that. <laughs> oh. Yeah, he was talking, he was saying that, he goes, the home dugouts are a little about six to eight inches higher, so, you know, new environment, and that's why I hit my head. I was like, yeah, yeah okay. go, go with that one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> He's tall and lanky, too. You just, you just got to know your environment. <laughs> you got to know your surroundings. And he's working hard today with all this heat. He's making sure everyone is staying hydrated and cool. Speaking of cool, how about the pitching performance of Mitchell Lamson? Another scoreless inning for Carolina. Kyle Enders is gone in strikes. We got slide three consecutive zeros on the board for South Carolina. But before that, as we take a look at our Coke Zero game track, South Carolina was hitting the ball over the yard. Eight runs in the second inning. And they sent everybody to the plate and some more than once. They got 12 hits in this game. Dyson has done a great job pitching for South Carolina. Six innings, two earned and three Ks. And Merrill Kelly, the starter who came in with a 10 and 2 mark, a 3.57 ERA, uh, was responsible for those eight runs in that second inning. So much to cheer about for South Carolina and their fans. We go to the final three frames of this one. And top of the seventh inning, Arizona State trying again to generate some offense. They've had men on the last couple of innings. In fact, the last two innings, they've had their leadoff men on, both of them, and were unable to do much damage. They did have a run in the fifth inning and we're able to scratch out one more but they haven't been able to do much with men on base and this first effort from Raul Torres falls in the glove of the second baseman Scotty Wingo one man down well to South Carolina's credit actually to Sam Dyson's credit yep. even when he's gotten people on early he's come back settled down has made some really good pitches to get himself out of those innings a couple of double play balls he's been great no question about it. His fastball has uh, moved in on righties, jammed them quite a bit. Lefties haven't been able to figure him out. No one has been able to figure oh. him out really yet, with the exception of Devin Marrero, who's the sixth hitter in the lineup, who's uh, who's two for three. Austin Barnes, the catcher. Oh. Looks at the ball up. The velocity oh. hasn't changed. He's been sitting on 94 miles an hour all game. Starting to move towards 100 pitches, and there is some action in the bullpen. This one is ripped. Oh, just over the glove of Bobby Haney, and it gets into left field for a hit. The key, obviously, for Dyson to work deep into this game to advance, they're still going to have to win three more games in the next four days. So that's the biggest challenge in that loser's bracket is the fact that you overall have to win five games, but once you get into that loser's bracket, you got to win three in four days and then you really see the depth of starting pitching mm -hmm. in your ball club we know they have a lot of depth in the bullpen we saw that in the yeah. rain delay game when he was kind of he had like four pitching changes in one inning and I think they threw a total of seven pitches in that inning <laughs> combined and uh, so we'll see what their starting pitching is like if they continue on top of the order Drew Maggi. Oh. That ball is down up a little high. Maggi grounded out to third to short. He did have a single in that fifth inning. But for Drew Maggi, who came in hitting 328, this has been a disappointing College World Series so far. 
jammed. This is going to hit the ground. Is there anyone at second? Yes, a good play. Shortstop covers. You can see that first base was going to be open, but uh, Scott Wingo did a good job kind of maintaining some composure and patience, took his time with it, and was able to throw out Austin Barnes. Well, this is kind of a tough one. When you get jammed, it's kind of that pop, and it has kind of a spin on it oftentimes when it gets hit that way. And there we got the second baseman going over there and, and bobbled a little bit, but still stay composed and know where the runners were to go out and get them out at second base. Right, and Barnes couldn't advance because he thought maybe the ball was going to get caught in the air. And we talk, talked about earlier about Scott Wingo and, and Bobby Haney up the middle. They're there for their gloves a lot. They really like the way they play up the middle. And, and we've seen a couple plays, good plays made by him today. Zach McPhee popped out to short, flied out to right, flied out to left. This was a guy that was hitting almost 400. Oh. We got a runner going to throw down a second and a Tuck. first stolen base for Arizona State. Drew Maggi, the best base dealer on the team. We've told you uh, several times how he is one of the best base dealers in the country. That's his 36th deal this season, but the first time they've successfully oh. stolen in the college World Series. He gets a great jump right there, and this is what we've been looking for for ASU. I mean, if we go, this is the elimination game, you're going to go out, go out there and throw your best game at the other team. Jack McPhee with a man in scoring position. Pulls one to first. It's fielded over there by Walker, who flipped, and Dyson does it again. Over 100 pitches, but man, has he been effective. Just two runs and seven hits. No, on baseball tonight, and certainly uh, Major League Baseball fans have seen Mike Leake. He has been outstanding for the Cincinnati Reds. And all the talk about Steven Strasburg, and granted, he's been great since he's come up. I mean, off the charts, great. Leake was the guy that started uh, from the first day for the Reds and was effective as any pitcher in baseball, really. He just feels his position well. Ike Davis, of course, uh, part of the Arizona State alum, been very good for the Mets, either going into the stands or hitting home runs and Colin Curtis last night appeared in his first game for the Yankees. He was here at ASU from 0406 league. That was part of the College World Series uh, trouble last year for them. He was the guy that they had circled as going to carry them through the College World Series and he struggled. And as a result Arizona State was unable to get it done. You can catch any balls with that glove. Uh, David Savage the home plate umpire you see him there walking off the field looks like that the uh, equipment combined with the sun and the heat uh, has caused him to head to seek shelter and perhaps rehydrate himself you see him walking with that bottle of uh, red liquid so we're in a little delay here as a couple of the other umpires are waiting to see what position that they will take unless it's Savage who comes right back. Chance to do a little work. Remind everybody that tomorrow, big day for the United States soccer program. The FIFA World Cup continues on ESPN and ESPN2 at 9.30 a.m. Eastern Time. The U.S. will face off against Algeria on ESPN. While on ESPN2, Slovenia will take on England. The U.S. advances to the knockout stage by beating Algeria. However, the American team has never advanced after failing to get four points in the first two matches. England can also advance with a win, provided the United States doesn't. So the United States uh, controls its future in the World Cup. You see the standings out of Group C. Slovenia with four points. And there's the United States, England, and Algeria. Algeria has not been, obviously, successful with the loss in the tie. The United States with two ties, and that's how you get two points. Given what you know about the United States soccer program, do you like their chances tomorrow? I do. I like their chances, and we, we talked about it earlier, the fact that it's in their hands, and that's the only way you would like it. So, You like um, the way they're playing? You like their style? What would they, you like to see them it, do a little differently? I think I wish they would just come out from the first minute and play with that intensity and that heart. They did that with England later on, and they picked it up after they scored, and that was what you looked at, and they were just kind of lulling back. If they do that from the minute, first minute, I think they can pull it off. 9.30 a.m. Eastern time tomorrow. Let's go down to Kyle on the field for the latest on David Savage, the home plate umpire. Uh, guys, we're going to have a little home plate umpire change. David Savage, a little bit dehydrated, so they're going to take him in. Kelly Gonzalez is going to come from second base back to home plate, and then Jim Jackson is the relief umpire, so he'll come into second base. You know, we've talked a lot about coaches making their first appearances here as head coaches. Well, for Arizona State, one assistant coach is making his first appearance here after being in a college game for 30 years. Ken Knutson was the head coach 
at Washington for 17 years. Brought in this year and as assistant to Arizona State and had some real good ones. He was at Washington with Tim Lincecum was there. Twice was one game away from making it to the College World Series as a head coach. But now this year his first year as assistant makes it back and was talking to him before the game. Said after the Super Regional win against Arkansas to get him here, they said he just sat in the dugout and smiled. Didn't say a word. Just sat in the dugout and smiled because after 30 years, he was going to get a chance to come back to Rosenblatt in the last year. You know, Kyle, obviously you've been here twice as a uh, pitcher. You live in this area. For, for the people who don't quite understand the connection the stadium has uh, to the city, can you explain that to the viewer? I mean, it goes. Johnny Rosenblatt was the mayor of Omaha and, and really was the guy that brought this tournament here. At the time, when he brought it to the stadium, they built the stadium. There was nothing going in here. And Johnny Rosenblatt went to the NCAA. It was being played in Kalamazoo, Michigan. Said, "Listen, we got a ballpark. Why don't you bring it here?" And amazingly, this was 1950. There wasn't anybody that really wanted the tournament. It comes back to Omaha at that point, and for the last 60 years, obviously, he's been in the exact same place. It, you got to realize, it didn't used to look like this. I mean, I started coming to this thing when I was born. And, I mean, the press box you guys are in and all the, the stadium club down the right field line, the stands out in the outfield, it, it wasn't like this. It's it's literally grown up as the college game has grown up in the last 60 years. And we've talked a lot about what's going to happen next, but it's uh, it's been neat to follow this stadium over time. Now, you mentioned Johnny Rosenblatt, and uh, you certainly can speak probably best about him, the uh, former mayor here. In fact, it was his son who I had a chance to talk with earlier. Born and raised in Omaha, uh, a multi-sport athlete, the Omaha mayor from 1954 to 1961. He did play semi-professional baseball and encouraged the city to build this stadium, and they dedicated it in his name in 1964. And uh, his son, Kyle, who was explaining to me about Brown Stadium, uh, I know you know very well. That's Steve Rosenblatt, who actually is here, Park. came back for this, yeah. But Steve is, uh, you know, it was interesting to get Steve's take on this, too, because Steve grew up around it. I mean, you know, obviously his dad was the mayor. He was at the stadium a lot. His dad was a baseball player growing up, played semi-pro ball, so that was one of the reasons he had such an affinity to the game. But Steve's take on it is, you know, is, is pretty impressive. I mean, he understands how the game has grown, and I think that last day is going to be tough. What's neat is, what it's going to become. I mean, the zoo is essentially going to take over the property, but where we're standing, a lot of this is still going to be a testament to Rosenblatt. So home plate essentially is going to stay as home plate. Right. Base pass will be about 60 feet. There'll be some grass out here with some monuments. So people for years to come can come back here, see what Rosenblatt was. And, you know, the new stadium is just going to be about two and a half, three miles straight north here. So it's not all that far away from where the new one's going. He told me his son that uh, Satchel Page came to pitch here and he was in the ballpark with his dad and his dad said you go upstairs you're going to be on the PA system so that was kind of a surprise to Steve Rosenblatt but he was on the public address system when Satchel Page was pitching right here in Omaha there's your new home plate umpire Kelly Gonzalez and he's coming in to a new pitcher as well Jordan Swaggerty is going to be on the mound Swaggerty has been the best reliever and the most innings pitched by far for Arizona State. No more runs allowed. That's going to be the mantra that Swaggerty and the Sun Devils have. They're down to their final six outs and they're trailing by eight runs. Look at the numbers in 33 games, a 206 ERA, 46 Ks, and only 10 walks. And he throws extremely hard. And he's with the 14 save. You see that he was also a second rounder for the St. Louis Cardinals. What's impressive to me is he's also the backup catcher. He's caught. He started in two games. He's got caught twice this year where he's caught and actually came in to close the game. Bobby Haney did get some contact with that one, but fouls it back. I, I think that's great. I know <laughs> we noticed that from Florida State. We saw that the other day when the left fielder McGee comes in. They got to get him a new glove so he can go on the hill to close the game out. Imagine. Oh, I got to take out the catcher's gear so I go out there and close. The 0 2 from Swaggerty is down. Mm. Got to figure. I mean, you, you think about it growing up, little league players, so oftentimes your best players are the pitchers, the shortstops, and, and the catchers. You know, they're involved in every play. And from a catching perspective, it probably helps him to be a pitcher. And from a pitching perspective, probably gives him a little bit of advantage when he goes behind the plate. I'm just wondering the toll it takes on his arm no throughout the, the course of the game. So, I mean, it's tough to say, okay, well, maybe you'll be the closer, so you're not going to catch today because I can use you, mm -hmm. but you can't dictate how the game's going to be, so I need you out there behind the plate catching. But I'm wondering, does he get, you know, eight throws, or does he need eight throws to loosen up? He's like, shoot, let's go. I'm loose. I've been catching all day. The 2-2 coming to Bobby Haney. 
Haney, the eight hitter, with a double in the game. He struck out. He also grounded out to the second baseman. You know, as the Garcia Parra girls grow up and maybe they get in a little league, one of the things Little League is now focused on, and as we cover the Little League World Series later this summer, it's not only pitch counts to help the arm, it's also how many innings you can catch because of that toll that it takes on your arm. They only allow limited amount of innings as a catcher as well as a pitcher. So you talk about that strain on the arm. That's something we'll get into uh, in August as we cover the Little League World Series in Williamsport. Haney grounds out 4-3. Well, I think that's smart because you often t t do see in Little League the catcher going, okay, takes off the gear and he goes in there yep. and he pitches. So they're trying to eliminate that and say, okay, if you're going to catch, it, yeah, you're going to catch. You're throwing the ball back a lot. You, you, there's a, it's almost like not the same, but similar to pitching and taking its toll on the arm. Wingo fouls one off. You also remember last year for Florida State, uh, Buster Posey was the same. He was the catcher and came out and then pitched in relief. And now he's playing first base for the San Francisco Giants. Given the limited amount of scholarships you have, if you can have somebody that plays two positions, it, it's a bonus. And play them well. It really is. I'm just wondering, when he's catching, when he knows that he might come in the game, is he throwing sliders or curveballs <laughs> back to the pitcher when he's tossing it back? <laughs> Good pitch there at the knees from Swaggerty at 93 miles an hour. You see so many guys who are two-way players in the college game, and when they get drafted and go into the professional level, it's interesting to see where they actually hone in and what position mm -hmm. they stay with. Swing and a miss shows you the stuff that Swaggerty has, and the throw down from the catcher, Austin Barnes, to Riccio Torres. Two men down. Well, you were a catcher. Moved over to the infield. You're right. I was actually, I, I caught my sophomore year in high school. And it wasn't until my senior year in high school that I started playing shortstop. Arizona State's pitching in two games, 16 earned runs, 27 hits, completely uncharacteristic. And the opponents averaged 366. People say, well, what happened? Well, you got the College World Series. The other teams are here because they do things well. They hit, you know? Right. It's not just that we have the best pitching staff and we're not going to give up runs. Even last night, you saw UCLA. Gary Cole was rolling through and... Featherston came up with a huge hit, cleared the bases. These players are very good players. You don't get to the College World Series by accident. No. You're looking at playing 60 games, 64 games in a season. Ground ball, good hop, and Maggi is there to throw out the hustling Evan Marzilli. Eighth and ninth innings left. Does Arizona State have a miracle in them? Great story, longtime season ticket holder Mark Jefferson about what the stadium has meant to him. He says the program cost only 10 cents back in 51, was autographed by his idol, Sidney Hatfield, who was the most outstanding player that season for Tennessee in 51, and the late Rod Dato, longtime coach at USC and one of the most popular coaches here in Omaha. Trip to Paris or Omaha? Omaha. Omaha. That seems to be the answer. Yeah. Get Zestos, <laughs> Omaha Steaks. Right. We get to tailgate. Sullivan's Restaurant. Sullivan's, yeah. Omaha Prime, Blue Cheese, which is excellent. Yep. Great wine, great steaks. All part of the uh, lure of Omaha. And the College World Series will be leaving Rosenblatt Stadium, but not leaving the city of Omaha. And the city does an unbelievable job. And it is, it's, there's a lot of life. It's very vibrant during this two-week span. That one is pulled foul down the line and right. You know, it's just an energy about Omaha when the College World Series is in town. I suppose if you surround yourself with college students and, uh, and little boys and girls who come with their parents who are enthusiastic about the sport, that's what kind of energy you're going to have here. It's, uh, it's relaxing, it's kind of old school, and it's really uh, refreshing. Cole Calhoun looks at a pitch on the outside corner, but it's called a ball as Dyson is trying to get another strikeout. And Dyson's trying to fill out the new umpire with Kelly Gonzalez behind the plate. David Savage did a great job. It was surprising that we saw him go out with being dehydrated because he really was consistent and did a wonderful job behind the plate. 
Three strikeouts on the game for Dyson who's pitching into the eighth inning well over 100 pitches now. We have seen a variety of arms get up in the South Carolina bullpen. Very impressive offensive show in the second inning the difference in this ball game. Fouled back by Calhoun who may be looking at his last at bat at the College World Series in 2010. Take a look at the difference obviously uh, the struggles that Kelly had pitching for Arizona State in one and two thirds ten hits eight runs and you see what Sam Dyson has been able to do so effective now the hundred and ten pitch that he's going to throw. He's popped out of play again. Well, we talked about we talked to coach Tanner and we asked him about Dyson and he says you know hopefully I can get 110 115 out of my pitcher. He's also in great shape works extremely hard and he knows he even in this hot weather in this day he's capable of doing that and we're seeing it. Three and two. To get back to what you're talking about, there is such a great environment in Omaha. I get asked so much, what do you remember about Rosenblatt Stadium? What do you remember? I go, I really just remember Omaha and the people, the people who make this stadium or this College World Series what it is. It is just so fun to come back here. The 3 2 is inside, ball four. Cole Calhoun runs down to first. We send it down to Kyle. Thank you, Rabbit. We've talked a lot about Dyson and the job he's done today. I think a few other things, too, is how deep he's gone into this game. The reason? Kind of strikes a oh, little two-seam fastball. Ties up a double hitter early. Look at the run there. And run is different than sink. A lot of times, run will stay flat, but when it moves as much as Dyson's ball does, a lot of guys couldn't catch up with it. That sink gives him the ground ball, but now he's gone deep into the game. So for South Carolina to fight back through this thing, they need to save that pen. Dyson's done that, too, today. Mauricio Torres with the leadoff man on in the eighth. First pitch strike. Good pitch. Another one from Dyson. Mauricio Torres during his hit streak uh, 472 average but he is hitless today he, although he has been hit twice by pitches. Now it's a, just get on. Trying to nibble on the outside corner and can't do it. Yeah right now we, we talk about ASU we keep talking about ASU in the running game and Maybe you're looking now, you might shut it down because you need just, you just need base runners. I mean, you're down by eight runs. You're in the eighth inning. Mm -hmm. You might just, all right, shut it down and see how we can get on base. Holding Calhoun on, so there's a huge hole between first and second base for Torres. You keep pitching outside, you can go that way. It looked like he tried to, but he fouled it off. Scott Wingo is shaded up the middle. Haney at short, Morales at first around the infield. Morales uh, had that, you know, we're not just happy to be here. We plan on staying longer. And they're in the process of doing so. The one two to Torres off his fist popped up left field. Evan Marzilli is there. And he makes the out. So one man down at the top of the eighth inning. Noma, the great story about Morales too was uh, when he saw a quote from Ray Tanner in the newspaper. Ray Tanner was quoted as saying, among other things, that uh, you know how happy he was that he was bringing his team to Rosenblatt, how happy he was that they're going to be able to experience it. And Morales, who we talked about, challenged him like, "Hey, coach, what? Wait a sec. Well, I saw in the paper you said that you're going to be so happy that we're there. I don't want to be happy to be there." And the coach looked at him and said, <laughs> well, the second part of that was we hope to stay long. And Morales said, they didn't put that in the paper. <laughs> yeah. He told him, he goes, I don't want to just get there still. I want to win, coach. How come you didn't say we want to win? And he goes, I did. He goes, they didn't put it. He goes, oh, well, they, they didn't put that in the paper. 
And that's not what they wrote. <laughs> Coach Morales was all fired up. <laughs> like, what are you doing? What do you mean happy to be here? Now Rudiger with one man down. Hit that one hard. It's going to drop in front of the right fielder with Merrifield. Calhoun is going to go to third and he's going to come in safely. So now men are on first and third. And you start to think that this might very well be the end for Sam Dyson who will get a nice round of applause if in fact they decide to pull him out of the game. Rudiger's second hit. And we are going to the bullpen. So Sam Dyson's day is over. And given the heat and the elimination game and the intensity of it, what an outing for Sam Dyson. Came into the game 5-5 five and five on the season with a 435 ERA, and right now he has held Arizona State to two runs on eight hits. Super performance. They're going to bring in their closer now, Matt Price. Big round of applause for Dyson in seven and a third. Three Ks, only a couple of walks, 119 pitches. As he turns it over to Price now in the bullpen. The NCAA College World Series presented by Capital One continues. We take a look at Matt Price of Carolina. Made three appearances so far in the postseason as you take a look at his overall numbers a great ERA a huge strikeout to walk ratio and the three appearances in the regionals and super regionals uh, an ERA of zero in four and two thirds innings pitch he's given up just two hits he has struck out six and walked only one so it's his game now to try to wrap this up we got one man out in the top of the eighth Arizona State's got a couple of men on and Devin. Morero, who's kind of been in the middle of everything. He's had a couple of hits. He also hit the ball hard in the sixth, but that resulted in a double play. South Carolina's turned two of those. And the first pitch from Price. You can tell he throws it hard and he keeps it down at 90 miles an hour. And he also has a great, good breaking ball that he can throw for strikes. And we talk about he really gets the adrenaline going. And uh, he pitches off that emotion. The two runners on the responsibility now of Price, but the runs, if they come in, will be charged to, and one of them will, Sam Dyson. So a single to start things off for Matt Price, the pitcher, and Devin Marrero has had a great game. He is three for four. And it's 10 to three now in the top of the eighth. Still one man down. We're going to have a pinch hitter come up for Arizona State as they call back Andrew Applin. Who twice is grounded out to second base. One of them resulted in the double play. Matt Newman out of Glendale, Arizona, the 175 pound junior steps up. And for Matt Newman, his numbers on the season, a 260 hitter. There is a propensity not to hit on runs but to put the ball in play. First pitch from Price is down. And this is what they need right now. They're not looking for the long ball. They don't need a long ball. They need to get once again base runners right now when you're down by seven. Just keep getting base hits and try to get something going. His 15 doubles third most on the team. He pulls this down the line and right and it's going to be good for a hit. Coming in to score, another run for Arizona State. Tony Rudiger, and we got ourselves first and third again, and it's 10 to 4. Good pinch hitting performance there from Matt Newman. And the closer for South Carolina having a hard time. Try to come inside on Matt Newman and down and in. And a lot of people say, well, on the lefty, they have, they like the pitch down and in. And we can see why right here, because Matt Newman does an excellent job driving that ball to right field. That's not an easy thing to do, to come in off the bench and pinch hit. And he comes through big and keeps Arizona State alive. So the final line for Dyson is both of those runs are earned. Four earned runs and seven and a third. Eight hits and 119 pitches. And now... Price is trying to wiggle out of a jam. First and third, the first pitch, a slider way away from Raul Torres. 
One of the co-captains on the team, Raul Torres, and he's trying to look, looking for his first hit today, but we've seen some great plays that he's made over there at third base. Matt Price is a freshman. How about the stage he's on right now? Well, they say he likes to be in that tough spot and likes big games. Well, here's a big game. The team's facing elimination and trying to close this game out. Ethan Carter up in the bullpen as Price delivers. And he is now behind in the count, 3-0. and oh. Price 10 saves. He broke his wrist in March of 2009. In high school, he hit 90-91. In the program, he got on at uh, South Carolina. His velocity now creeps up between 92 and 95, but in danger of loading the bases, and he will. That ball actually hit Raul Torres. It's a third hit by pitch that Arizona State has had. They had 68 coming into the game, now up to 71, and the bases are loaded. Remember Mark Kelby the other night, he was going right, left, right, left, depending on uh, who was coming up. Better at least be thinking about that as he calls in the pitch now. Austin Barnes, the number nine hitter, and then we turn the order around. He's got two hits. The bottom of the order has really done what little damage has been done, but they've done it for Arizona State. That pitch is in for a strike. Right now, you, you try, you're not worried about hitting a home run. Once again, we just need base hits. Just keep, keep, keep it rolling. Keep the line moving. Marrero at third, Applin at second, Torres at first. That pitch is away. We go to one and one. And we got to remember there's still just one out. Sam Dyson would get himself in trouble like this and get that double play. Now Matt Price is hoping for the same thing. Good pitch in there for a strike at 85 miles an hour. The one two great pitch on the outside corner called strike three and Austin Barnes is retired. Second out of the inning the first strikeout for Price. This is just an excellent pitch by Matt Price. He really just goes on the outside corner. It comes back just and he really hits that paints that outside corner. It's amazing how he just kind of settled down after hitting a batter walking a batter and coming back. And, and not just that pitch, but the pitches before to yep. get a strikeout. Now Drew Maggi, the leadoff hitter, does have a single. That came in the fifth. First pitch is out. You can see the velocity at 93. The uh, hit batter, Torres, was only the fourth batter that Price has hit all season. The 1 0 to Maggi. That one's outside as well. So Maggi's going to force the issue and make Price come in over the plate. Zach McPhee with his 393 average into the day is on deck, and then it's Cole Calhoun. Well, Price stays way away, and he's in danger of walking in a run. Then you start to consider that the tying run will be in the on deck circle. A lot of these guys are patient hitters and then you walk the next two guys and a couple more runs and then you got to get Cole Calhoun and Riccio Torres coming up. Gets that call. That's where Price has been living and even that one looked like it might have been a little bit outside but he gets the call to go to three and one. Another one right in the exact same place. As a hitter, you want to move up on a plate a little bit? No, I mean, you're, you still got it. You're still in the hitter's count, 3-1. If he can hit it twice like that, you tip your hat to him. Now you're at your 3-2 rather than going after and trying to hit his pitch. You still got to look at a 3-1 hitter's count. Look for your pitch. Can't let that one go by again, though. The 3-2. Hey, that time he fouled it off. 
That's why the, the catcher on that one goes, okay, we've shown you we've been going outside, outside, outside. He set up in. That price didn't hit the spot. He still kind of went outside and he protected. We'll see if the catcher sets up back inside again because that pitch didn't come in. Remember, Kelly Gonzalez came in. We had some heat exhaustion, so we had to leave. The runners are all moving, and it's all over. Wow. How about that pitch? Wonder if there was a little bit of a distraction. I understand the running at that point, but boy, they were they were within 15 feet of home plate. And a strikeout. So the bullpen of Price picks up where Dyson left off, and the RISP RIP runners in scoring position left in place. But nears its conclusion. A couple more runs for Arizona State, but leaving the bases loaded. Teams are uh, outside. Sometimes they come in and watch the games, but they're uh, trying to stay cool, probably, outside the stadium. We're in the bottom of the eighth inning. Whit Merrifield leads off. And take a look at the Sooners. Merrifield lifts this one deep into the night in left, and it is gone. A huge home run for Whit Merrifield. And a little insurance comes on the 13th home run of the season for Merrifield. That was a blast. And, and a big home run for South Carolina. You saw Arizona State, you know, they put some pressure on you. You got out of a jam. You left the bases loaded. But it still kind of puts that feeling. And he comes in and he crushes this ball. Puts his head down, knows it was out. Ball ran in inside. He got the barrel out to crush it. The second level in the left field wall. Now Jackie Bradley Jr. off speed pitch called the strike. Home runs today from Merrifield, Bradley Jr., and Adrian Morales for South Carolina. Bradley holds up on that one, and it shows you his ability to recognize a pitch. Singled in the first, home run in the second, a three RBI home run. Then he got hit by a pitch with the bases loaded. This one is ripped into right, and Bradley's going to be on base again. Well, it's early in the College World Series, and I thought Garrett Cole was the most impressive pitcher we've seen. Perk was very good, but I thought Cole's stuff was outstanding. To me, Bradley Jr. has been the most impressive hitter I've seen. I'd have to agree with you. He does. He, he just looks, we talk about over and over again, how calm he looks at the plate and spits on pitches, tough pitches, and waits for his pitch. And Christian Walker ground ball backing up the third baseman Torres who fires all the way across the dot and makes the play. Raul Torres with a wet gem as he throws it over to Riccio Torres. Well, what a play by Raul Torres. He just, gosh, we've talked about it earlier. He's he made some great plays at third, some hot shots, but here we get a high chopper and he's going back, kind of go over his head, gets it deep over there off the cut of the grass and has to make a strong throw to first base. Strong throw to his brother over there, and the brother makes a great stretch to get him out. You think they practiced that at home in the backyard? They had a play, it's not similar, but they had a great play in their opening game, and uh, that's something that they'll leave Omaha with. Now they've had two great plays to combine with each other here on the Rosenblatt Stadium field. Once again, Adam Matthews, who came in for Brady Thomas, is second at bat. That was a heck of a play. Bradley Jr. though is in scoring position. That's one where you go, you're making the play and you go, here it comes little brother, hope you can pick me. <laughs> pick it up. And little brother's going, way to keep it out of the dirt, nice throw. I practiced that a million times. Backyards, parking lots, in the dirt, nice job of blocking it by Austin Barnes. You know, with uh, three outs to go, though, I, you still got to harken back to Arizona State's inability to get their running game going. And they really weren't able to put pressure on the other team or defense like they done all year. Matthews fouls that one back and out of play.
Ray Tanner, the coach, looks like he's going to move on the longest current streak, by the way, of NCAA regional appearances of all SEC schools, 10 years in a row. They've been to at least the regional, seven super regionals in the last 10 years for the South Carolina team. 10 straight seasons of over 40 wins. And the first and fastest active coach to get to 800 wins. Good pitch in the outside corner, and that is strike three. Swaggerty can do that, no question about it. So Matthews is retired for the second time. And a reminder, while we'll have the United States on tomorrow, Wednesday afternoon, Ghana and Germany and Australia and Serbia will play on ESPN, the ESPN2. The Germans uh, stunned by the Serbs fighting for survival. They need a win to have a chance to move on. Ghana needs a draw to advance the knockout phase. So 9.30 and then again at 2 o'clock for the World Cup. Adrian Morales. The Tigers of Clemson have arrived. The game about an hour and 15 minutes from now. That looks like a heavy bag and it's hot out. No one else, though, is carrying that for him. In the hole, it's short diving stop by Maggi. He gets up, bounces one over. Two web gems in the inning for Arizona State's defense. What a play by Maggi at shortstop. He backs up Raul Torres's play, and Arizona State now, perhaps motivated by that defense, will come to the plate. Three outs away from seeing their season either end or continue. Drew Maggi with a gem. They have played starring roles already, and there perhaps will be more stars emerging. As we take a look at our Capital One player of the game, it's Jackie Bradley Jr. He goes three for four, has that three-run home run, and also got hit by a pitch with the bases loaded. And we certainly have talked a lot about him, and uh, perhaps other stars will emerge, but certainly his impact on the game today was huge, as was the starting pitcher. Sam Dyson was outstanding as well for South Carolina. So here we are in the ninth inning, last ups for ASU as they trail by seven. Yeah, I really look, look at Sam Dyson's performance today, which is tremendous. Yep. That has really kept them in this game. The one, two, three hitters on each side, and uh, South Carolina's got the better of them going eight for 13. This is Zach McPhee, the two hitter, 0 for 4 in the game. And it's just stunning for somebody that's uh, had such a great season and hit almost 400 that he would struggle so mightily. But that happens. Down to 386. In fact, he and Manji have been in somewhat of a funk. I mean, their averages, which were very, very high, have, have come down dramatically the last couple of weeks. There you see Cole Calhoun getting ready, the captain. Rio from Price is poured in there for a strike. Price right now likes to get himself 3-0 and then come back and make some good pitches. The, <laughs> he likes it or <laughs> that's just what's well, happening? It just seems like it. 3-1, <laughs> jam job, and the bat gets dropped by McPhee at the plate. Well, he's talking about he comes back and he just wants to pound you in making good pitches here. And you see McPhee really, gosh, he... That's a backbreaker right there. He tried to get all of that <laughs> bat slipped out of his hand. One of the things that seems to be a challenge for college pitchers is to pitch inside, and yet Dyson did it really well, and we're seeing Price do the same thing, not afraid to come inside. That one is back up the middle, and the leadoff man in the ninth inning is going to be on. Zach McPhee's first hit of the ball game. Well, maybe, maybe a little ninth inning activity. To keep up with all of the College World Series information, log on to NCAA.com. It's the official online home for all 88. NCAA championships. Now Cole Calhoun. And then right here, you get your leadoff runner on. You shouldn't be going unless, you know, they're playing behind you and they're just going to give it to you. And then if you want to go ahead and go, you can. But right now, you just need base runners. 19 steals. He's not going anywhere. And Calhoun looks at a strike. Not holding him on. He could conceivably go. It would take off the force or a double play. Eleven four in the ninth inning. 
here at Rosenblatt Stadium in Omaha. Carl Ravitch and Omar Garcia Power. Kyle Peterson down on the field. The 0 1 blocked and, and no advancement. Right now, I mean, they, you got to make sure it goes by. You don't, you, like I said, you're down this much. You're right, you might consider taking away the double play. Sometimes you're actually a distraction on the first baseman over there, and especially when you have a lefty mm -hmm. up, you might just want to just stay. Just, you know, I have no problem with him just staying. If he wants to go, he can go. It's up to him. He's going. Calhoun fouls it back over our heads. So McPhee will go back. Arizona State, the number one overall seed, their college World Series history. They have uh, five titles. You see their record, the 22 appearances, five times second place, six times third place. And twice ASU has gone 0-2 in their 21 college World Series. And again, this is their fourth chance in six years. Runner goes again, the throw down is not going to be in time, so moving into scoring position is Zach McPhee. That was a ball to Calhoun. ASU uh, of their national titles, they were one and one after two games in 69 and 77 and won those crowns. They finished up runner up in 88 after going one and one. Interesting there, since the seeding began in 99, the overall number one seed has never gone 0 and 2. They haven't always won, but they've never gone 0 and 2. Calhoun lifts this one high in the air to left. A lazy fly ball, and Evan Marzilli is under it. Two outs away from the number one seed going home. Mauricio Torres now lumbers to the plate. Mauricio, the first baseman for Arizona State. His hit streak is in jeopardy. Needs to get a hit now. But uh, he probably would. Well, you want to keep the hit streak going. He's got more. He's got more time to play. Watching Casey Wills, whose season ended with a 56-game hitting streak, while we have Ventura here with a 58. So we're nearing the midway point. You, you definitely want to keep it going. I mean, you look at the this lineup of Arizona State. They also have a young team. I mean, they only have two seniors, people under Dean Juniors. I mean, they they have a good seven to eight guys coming back out of their starting lineup. The 1-0 to Torres, swing and a miss. One and one. 91 mile an hour pitch from. Matt Price. Only one reliever used, which is huge for South Carolina. As Dyson got into the eighth inning, good pitch on the outside corner from Matt Price. So Torres now behind one and two. Frustrating, lonely feeling standing out there on second base for Zach McPhee with his team down seven runs. And so much promise coming in. They've not lost two games in a row all year. The one-two, good pitch, strike three. Dyson the place have similar stuff with that two-seam fastball. It, uh, as Kyle said, it moves side to side, but it moves a lot. It does move a lot, and he just he just comes up there with power. He's he's got the batter one and two. Here he goes, and he just comes at it. He goes, here it goes, try to hit it. And he just swings right underneath that ball. That's a tough pitch to hit. And that's what you want to see out of your closer, just come right at him. And now one out away, and it's Rudy. Johnny Rudiger at the place. He's got two hits today. I'm sure he gets that all the time. I know that's his nickname, but being the nephew of one Rudy Rudiger, a great movie, one of my favorite all-time movies, yeah. Rudy. So... I think right now they should start the chant, Rudy, Rudy, if they want ASU to continue right now. They need it. The 1 0 to Rudiger. Chases the high stuff, and it's now 1 and 1. He must get that all the time. Everywhere oh, yeah. he goes with that name. But gosh, what a just a great movie. Mm -hmm. uh, I cry every time I watch it. At the end, just cry. Just so happy for him. 1-1 one, one to Rudiger, number one, strike two. This is rear back and throw it, and now the South Carolina fans will stand on their feet. 
We talked about Matt Price. He, pits off, he pitches off that emotion and adrenaline, and he's feeling it right now. He's just going at him. He's not, you know, I don't think you even need a sign from the catcher. He's like, let's just keep going with the fastball. Game over. South Carolina dominant today as they knock the number one overall seed out of the NCAA tournament. For the first time this year, Arizona State loses two games in a row, and it ends their season. Gamecocks survive, and for the first time in the College World Series, an SEC team gets a victory as well. What a performance from Sam Dyson, the starting pitcher. Matt Price comes in and cleans it up. And all sorts of offensive heroes from South Carolina. Here's the final pitch of the game. Just come right at him, throw the fastball, game over. We're moving on. We are not eliminated. Everybody but Christian Walker manages a hit for South Carolina. As they amass 14 hits and 11 runs. So UCLA is waiting. They're 2 0. Florida has been eliminated, and now Arizona State. So two of the Top seeds that were here are going home. We continue to have more action tonight as Oklahoma gets set to face Clemson. Dominant performance for the Gamecocks of South Carolina, so they will play again and need to continue to win. Jackie Bradley Jr., the hero of the day offensively with the free run home run and an RBI after getting hit by a pitch. For Kyle Peterson, Nomar Garcia, Para Moore, college baseball coming up as Oklahoma and Clemson meet at 9 Eastern. This is a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader.